That lead at Old Trafford, they'll want to end the year on a high. And a reminder of the teams, Martinez is in goal, Conser, Carlos, Longley and Moreno, the RB, Douglas, Louise, McGinn, Bailey, Watkins and Ramsey. Watkins, who celebrates his 28th birthday today. And there was just a, a lovely moment with him and his family that you'd spotted ahead of kick-off, Dean. Yeah, it's all his birthday today, and uh, he had his child on the pitch with him today. Um, I saw his uh, his partner Ellie there as well, so really nice for him. Hopefully, he gets a goal today. So uh, the, uh, the little kid with uh, number 11 on the back of the Clariton sky blue shirt with Daddy across the top will also be hoping for very much the same. I'm sure Vincent Company and anybody of a Burnley persuasion will hope that is not the case, but if it is, it will be his 50th goal in the Premier League for Aston Villa as I'll give you the Burnley side in a moment but Aston Villa have been turned around in this first half so they'll be attacking the Holt end as we look low down we're left of uh, the halfway line quite low down here in the, uh, the main stand so Villa playing from left to right as we look Burnley in their yellow shirts and black shorts have Trafford in goal the back four of Bettino, O'Shea, Bayer and Taylor Brownhill, Berger, Goodmanson for what is his 300th appearance in English football, Amduni, Odebert and Foster. So they've made the one change, Goodmanson coming in for uh, for Trezor as the ball goes long by uh, by Trafford, aimed towards Lyle Foster, headed away by Diego Carlos, and then that ball will be intercepted by uh, Leon Bailey. And do you think in many ways, Dean, that Burnley will look to the template that Sheffield United played here recently with great effect for Chris Wilder's side? Yeah, possibly. Um, I think it will certainly give other teams uh, hope to come in here. They they frustrated Villa for long periods. Um, you know, they've just gone and pressed Villa early here. Uh, I think that leaves the space in behind for Ollie Watkins a little bit. So I would expect them to be behind the ball a lot more than, than jumping. Bailey running forward, right-hand side, enters the penalty area, tries to pass it into the centre of the box. It comes back to him off the block legs of uh, Taylor. And he quickly worked over the cross, but Taylor diverted that behind for a corner kick so in the opening 90 seconds a corner kick to Villa in front of that two-tiered halt end away towards our right-hand side and Burnley have got everybody back to try and defend this set piece worrying times already early on for, for Vincent Company. he will certainly not want, be wanting to, uh, to concede in the early stages there were a little bit of concern there because Ramsey was free and available right corner of the box in it comes now headed out volleyed back in and volleyed wide at that far post and it goes wide for uh, for a goal kick from Diaby's effort a goal at Selhurst Park though Alistair Bruce Ball well the game is yet to get back underway Brentford have had the ball in the back of the net in this hugely important game for both teams brilliant goal as well Keen Lewis Potter throwing himself and controlling a left foot volley from a Ruslev right wing cross but our referee at the moment Rob Jones just delaying kick off while VAR check on the validity of the goal so Brentford think they're in front come back to me in a second Ian well they both need a win, don't they? Brentford, four successive defeats. Palace, eight without a win. As uh, light rain is now falling, persistent light rain, as uh, Concert tidies the ball back to uh, to Martinez. Martinez strokes it out. We were just saying to uh, to Dean ahead of the uh, the kickoff, Dean Smith gave six of these Villa players debuts. Uh, so you, you know a lot of them so, so well. Yeah, I do. Um, and it's great to see them doing so well as well. You know, I know it's been well publicised. Two of them, Esri Cons and Oli, are, are signed both twice. So I must have liked them that much. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got uh, Martinez, you've got uh, Jacob Ramsey as a youngster, Watkins, as we've mentioned, Leon Bailey, Douglas Luiz, Martinez, and, and Concert. Uh, Dean Smith has certainly played his vital role in getting this club back to where they're pushing now after that promotion to the Premier League and consolidating themselves in the top flight as that was a bit of a moment for Martinez he came out of his penalty area and he might have just caught Lyle Foster in the uh, in the process ball didn't necessarily kick on towards him did it and then he came out of his penalty area and had to go in for a 50-50 challenge with the South African yeah he seemed to just check up a little bit the ball and um, you know both players came together in the end I mean Emmy I think was uh, claiming the throne himself Lyle Foster who uh, missed eight games about a two-month period where he was uh, he was out due to mental health issues 
as the throw comes in from that right hand side and because of that which um, he had specialist treatment for quite wisely and I think this had the uh, the backing of Vincent Company he's been left out of the uh, the South African squad for the forthcoming African Cup of Nations which will be getting underway um, early in the in the new year and it goes without saying the best possible coverage on the world service which is a timely reminder as they've just joined us here at Villa Park so wherever you are in the world always a pleasure to have your company World service here at a gloomy and wet Villa Park, but five minutes in, Aston Villa nil, Burnley nil, Crystal Palace nil, Brentford one, Manchester City nil, Sheffield United nil, and no goals at Molyneux between Wolves and Everton. As McGinn looks for the ball over the top towards uh, Watkins, and all in blue, it come out of his penalty area, and then actually collects it one-handed as he backpedals his way into his box for James Trafford, and he throws it out as James Trafford for, uh, for Bayer. So that goal does stand, just for confirmation, that goal from Keane Lewis Potter. But there was a three-minute VAR review. So, uh, just are you are you a fan of VAR? You know, when it first came in, I was. I thought, you know, offsides. Um, a sense of know, book coming. It's it's black and white. <laughs> yeah, but it's a but it just slows everything down now. You know, and and for me, it's taking too long. If if we're getting into three minutes for the VAR, then that's not clear and obvious for me. No. Yes. Well, we'll be able to uh, to see it for ourselves tonight on Match of the Day. It's on 10.25 on BBC One. Nil-nil in the early stages. Concert, Diego Carlos takes it to feet just outside the area. Martinez, Burnley will go and press. Foster, ball then played out from that far side. And it's uh, with Longley, who then spots that Concert is in mid of space and he's midway through his own half. Stabs it forward towards Diaby over the halfway line. Bailey to his right. Watkins through the middle, carries it almost to the right corner of the area, finds Leon Bailey, left-footed cross, deep towards the far post. Moreno was arriving very, very late, Burnley headed away, picked up by a trundling Douglas Louise, and then the ball goes inside to, uh, to Ramsey, and then Burnley clear, and Foster inside now to, uh, to Berger. What about Jacob Ramsey? He had a frustrating start to the season because he had an ankle injury that was carried over from his success with the England's under-21s. This is his, uh, a fifth successive start for him now in this Villa side. Yeah, he's, he's a tremendous prospect and uh, he's unfortunate. He was doing really well with the 21s and uh, got injured. Um, I gave him his debut here against West Brom Albion when he was 17 and um, he got he got better and better as uh, the longer we saw him and he's, uh, he's, he's become a permanent fixture in the team which is really good to see and his younger brother Aaron who Dean will also know from his time at Aston Villa he's on the bench for Burnley this afternoon as we'll go to Molyneux and Pat Murphy it's nil-nil here against Everton but Huang uh, should have scored for Wolves set free by Smart Parson Cunha on the halfway line he's in four he's got the pace he dallied though and the ball was hacked clear Wolves nil Everton nil and it remains Aston Villa nil Burnley nil it's uh, a little quirk but the uh, the history between these teams the home team has only won one of their last nine Premier League encounters there have been four away wins and four draws uh, but Burnley whose last three visits to Villa Park have all been drawn still holding the team that lies third in the Premier League table but has the opportunity to go level with the leaders Liverpool as concert looking for the run of Watkins headed away by Bayer, picked up by Amdouni chipped forward then by Konza Bailey plays it in field to McGinn just uses his body to try and shield it away from Foster who was working hard and persistent to try and win the ball back but it's still nil-nil and we haven't really had our first serious chance of the game so far no the Villa have had one, the one chance from the corner with uh, Diaby at the far post but apart from that in, in general play um, not too many Burnley surprised me a little bit. They are jumping a little bit high to go and press Villa. Um, and I think it just leaves that space in behind for Ollie. John McGinn's brilliant at finding Ollie on them balls over the top. So it's something we'll look out for. Ollie Watkins, who's already scored 14 goals this season. As uh, the rain is just starting to drift into our commentary position. Which is uh, never, never great. As the ball goes downfield and Longley with a, a quick throw in front of the Burnley supporters who filled their bottom tier of that stand on the far side but not quite the top tier as you uh, you get a third of the uh, the stand opposite the main stand here at Villa Park which will 
be increased to 50,000 when work eventually starts in 2025. I think it's scheduled to uh, to begin. But nine minutes in, and it remains goalless. What about the start at the, the Etihad for Masfaruki? No, no here, but good chance for Alvarez. Fed in by Foden at the edge of the area. His shot bobbled wide of the right post, but the pattern of play already evident. Lots of City possession. Sheffield United trying to stay organised in shape off the ball and then counter-attack. Goalless. The last team to uh, to win at Manchester City was uh, Brentford in November 22. As uh, Trafford rolls the ball out towards that far side. O'Shea rolls it then to Foster, lays it off. Berger tried to sweep it first time to Odebert. Interception though from Conter off his chest. McGinn is able to turn. Watkins lays it off just fractionally behind Diaby. And Charlie Taylor wins the ball for Burnley. Odebert over the halfway line. Challenge came in from McGinn. And that had a free kick, which is awarded by referee Stuart Atwell. Free kick to uh, to Burnley. Ten minutes in, not many scares for the away side. No, it's really interesting how they're both playing. They're, they're both build up with a three at the back, and they're both pressed in a 4-4-2 shape, so they're very similar in some ways. That's the voice of Dean Smith, former Aston Villa manager. It was Charlie Taylor, really just pumped that ball out towards the far side, the right. Ramsey, though, picks it up. For Aston Villa, Jacob Ramsey runs in field now and finds Conser. The right back for Villa. Back to Diego Carlos because of Odebert being quite close towards him. Carlos will carry this ball forward now. The uh, Brazilian defender, long late. Back it goes to Diego Carlos. 11 minutes in now with, uh, with Conser. This is quite a high line as well. I just looked then at the middle third of that field. Very, very concentrated. He's very, very congested in there. They want to stop playing. Uh, they want Villa to stop playing through them. So, you know, Villa are going to have to go round or over them. Um, you can see he's quite animated in at the moment because he, he, he's got his positional sense and his positional process is what he wants the players to be in. Um, and he was a little, little bit frustrated, frustrated with Diaby then because he wasn't where he wanted him. Unai Emery, who has made the fewest changes to Premier League starting 11s this season. Two today would take that total to 25. Here is uh, Conser. His name is being chanted by the Aston Villa fans inside Villa Park. We've already brought you commentary of the old firm where Celtic went eight points clear, albeit Rangers will have two games in hand after a 2-1 victory at Celta Park. But there's been a goal at Pataudry, Gavin Wallace. Yeah, totally against the run of play. It's for St Mirren, Aberdeen, Nelson Mirren won. Mark O'Hara, the captain, blasts home from about 18 yards or so. Great Kilty down the left-hand side, whipped in a great ball. It was poorly cleared, and it fell to the captain, who smashed home. Aberdeen, nil, eh, Aberdeen Nelson, Mirren won. Moreno hooked a bouncing ball into the path of Watkins, who just hit it first time instinctively. A left-footed volley that was straight at Trafford. Yeah, good move from Villa there. Uh, Jacob Ramsey comes inside the pitch and allows the outside for Moreno. He scored a couple of goals recently at the far post. And uh, JJ does a good job blocking the full-back and he helps it on for Oli in a good connection, but a good save. It was a save at the uh, the second attempt. It was just an instinctive shot, wasn't it, from Watkins? It was, yeah. And he's probably not a favoured side on his left, but he, he caught it really well. Nil-nil it remains then. Five live, the World Service and BBC Sounds here at Villa Park. And a a damp and blustery home of Aston Villa as they are playing from left to right as we look and now Diego Carlos another goal at Selhurst Park Alistair Bruce Ball much needed equaliser for Roy Hodgson and Crystal Palace where would they be without Michael Alise Jordan Ayew chased the lost cause whipped the cross in from the left and Alise popped up at the far post athletically volleying into the back of the net Palace 1 Brentford 1 well, I'm going to make a prediction here today that this will not be goalless. And the reason I say that is, incredibly, Unai Emery has never been involved in a goalless draw in his time as a Premier League manager. That's 95 games, whether at Villa or indeed at Arsenal. And you have to go back to 2022 for the last time that Villa had a goalless draw in the Premier League. Yeah, it's so there will be goals. There will be goals. It's an incredible stat. And, you know, his teams are always looking how they're going to build to go and create opportunities. Um, you know, they have been susceptible to a few chances with the off high offside line that they've been playing. Um, so that is, that is uh, obviously the opportunity of goals here today.
It's a, a bold claim, and I'm hoping that the curse of the commentator doesn't come back and uh, and bite me on the backside with that, as, uh, as Taylor, the left-back for Burnley, just nudged it forward. He's getting berated by Brownhill at the moment as he came quickly under pressure by a combination of Diaby and Bailey. Goal at the Etihad, Masfaruki. It's gone the way you'd think. Rodri with the opener, picking up the ball midway through the Sheffield United half. Lovely run forward and then a finish, slotting it into the back of the Sheffield United net. Manchester City 1, Sheffield United 0. Watkins, unable to turn, holds on to the ball, then knocks it short to, uh, to Ramsey, to Douglas Louise. Collected it well under pressure. Berger's been tracking him. Douglas Louise runs out towards that far side. Every outfield player is in the Burnley half away towards our right-hand side. Concert links up, tries to get things moving with Diaby, then loses the ball. Diaby on the recovery, checks the run of Amdouni. Odebert tried to get there as well, and Aston Villa have won it back. And for what potentially could have been a, a dangerous situation, they... Retrieve the ball, Watkins now makes the run, the angle is tight, looks for the cutback and gets a corner kick, 0-0, nil, nil. Dean. Yeah, great recovery from Diaby who lost it and, uh, you know, Villa turned defence into attack very quickly and have won a corner. Uh, looks like Burnley going to be uh, making a change very soon, there is activity already on the on the bench and it uh, looks like Del Quar is the player who's, uh, who's going to be coming on. It's Bayer who is the uh, the player who's gone down Jordan Byatt his 50th appearance for uh, for Burnley might just well be a rather short-lived affair he's down in the in the penalty area so there's a, there's a delay it'll give us an opportunity to go to Pat Murphy at Molyneux it's still nil-nil here against Everton Wolves comfortably the better side just now Cunha 25 yards out draw a bead took aim one yard wide can't get Calvert-Lewin into this game Everton Wolves nil Everton nil so Delcroix will be coming on Motherwell have taken the lead against Livingston at Fir Park in the Scottish Premiership. Motherwell 1, Livingston 0. We brought you commentary of Celtic 2, Rangers 1. After this game, we've got Nottingham Forest, Manchester United after sports report from 5.30. But uh, Del Quart waits to come on. Bayer is back on his feet. Referee Stuart Atwell, the change is going to be made. That must always be so frustrating as a manager to have an injury and an enforced change so early in the game. Yeah, it certainly is. It looks like a muscle injury as well. Ollie Watkins has made a great run across him and he's had to, to react to that. And, uh, yeah, it's unfortunate for them. But, yeah, you've, you've done all your work, especially on set pieces now. Um, luckily, it's a straight swap, so, uh, you know, hopefully he can just slot in. So the, uh, the change has been made, corner kick to be taken for Aston Villa from the right, again it's deep towards the far post and the referee has said that's a goal kick but, and a yellow card has been given to Concer for descent but I'm sure there was a Burnley player who back heeled the ball so I can see where the Aston Villa players are coming from I think a big giveaway is when there's 11 players that react like that. <laughs> Came over, and it was going to go to concert, and it was Brownhill. <laughs> off his backside. He did motion to back heel it, but you're right, it struck, it, struck, it struck him on the back, and what should have been a corner kick for everybody to see, Stuart Atwell, and then to cap it all and to compound it, Esri Konza has been booked for descent to the uh, to the match official. 18 minutes played, nil-nil. Ball kept in play over on that far side by Vitinho. Burnley now with Berger. Midway through the Aston Villa half, Berger holds off Douglas Luiz, comes back on himself. Del the substitute. Well, he was being quickly closed down by Diaby, and he goes back to Trafford, who's confident, actually puts his right foot on the ball, doesn't move, waits, almost teasing Diaby, and then strokes it back out towards O'Shea, the former West Bromwich Albion player. And then Goodmanson with a back pass that almost lets in Diaby, and Trafford just had to get there very, very quickly. The faintest of touches was enough because that was too close. It was too close. It was a bit of a risky back pass there, um, and Diaby was ready for it. Unai was frustrated because I think he felt he should have won the ball there with, with the goalkeeper. He's pacing around at the moment is, uh, is Unai Emery in that technical area, head bowed with that jet black hair of his as Burnley pick up the ball on the far side the right, 19 minutes played. 
Yellow shirts, black shorts. Vitinho, though, has lost it. Jacob Ramsey will run forward. Vitinho gets back goal side. Ramsey, though, leaves him trailing and on his knees and now runs forward for Aston Villa and fires it in low and then cleared away first time by O'Shea. Back it comes. This is Moreno. Left side of the penalty area. Moreno and Del Quar this time gets there before Watkins on the edge of the six-yard box. A penalty now at Patadri, Gavin Wallace. Handball inside the box from Aberdeen. Marco Hara went to shoot just on the edge of the area. He steps up now. Pillage, oh! He's put it beyond the left-hand post. A reprieve for Aberdeen, Ian. Aberdeen, Nelson, but in one, a missed penalty. So a missed penalty for, uh, for Aberdeen. We're also at Hearts, Ross County at Tynecastle after bringing you the commentary with Pat and Vicky. Celtic 2, Rangers 1. Here it's 0-0 at Villa Park between Aston Villa and Burnley. And Aston Villa have got a free kick over on the far left side as they play from left to right, attacking the Holt end. So Douglas Louise to take it. Burnley have got their line of yellow shirts just on the edge of the penalty area. There are currently two Aston Villa players who were standing behind Trafford, the goalkeeper, inside the six-yard box as they now run away. In it comes now, and the goalkeeper collects that bouncing ball by clawing it and hooking it down deep and releases the ball towards Foster, and Foster's up towards the halfway line, releases Otterbear. Otterbear now is up against McGinn. McGinn has got support with Diaby. Otterbear goes away from McGinn, enters the penalty area, but doesn't get past Diaby. Corner kick, and it was a promising break for Burnley. It was. There was a big chance at one end from Villa with the, with the free kick, um, and they, they countered from the free kick. They won the ball back very quickly, Burnley, and showed good feet there to beat John McGinn and win a corner. Come on, Burnley, was the cry from the travelling support. Has made that journey down the... I was going to say down the M6, but they have had to have made a little journey west on the M65 first. As they wait for Goodmanson to take his time placing the ball down in the uh, in the quadrant. We're approaching the midway point of the first half, it's 0-0. Goodmanson to take it. Half-hook goalwards by O'Shea, and then the referee has spotted a, a foul. And that will be a free kick to uh, to Aston Villa. Motherwell have got a second goal, incidentally, at home to Livingston. Motherwell 2, Livingston 0. And then I mentioned that later on we've got commentary from the city ground of Forest against Manchester United. 6.06 will follow that. And five lives Premier League Sunday tomorrow on air from midday. Fulham Arsenal at 2. The Tottenham-Bournemouth game will be live on Sports Extra from 2 o'clock. So, Burnley... Doing well at the moment to uh, to hold Aston Villa. as a, a high ball towards Diaby. Two Burnley players go for the same ball and catch Diaby in a sandwich and they give away a direct free kick. Vincent Company doesn't seem too impressed with the decision. It wasn't intentional. No, there was a little bit of a nudge. Um, I think what he's not, not happy about Diaby on the centre-back as he's made the run on, the, on his blind side and, uh, and then the lads come round and caught Diaby. So big chance for Villa here from a free kick. Charlie Taylor has been shown a yellow card from uh, from Stuart Atwell. Before the free kick is taken, we'll nip to pass at Molyneux. It's still nil-nil here, but Everton, all they've had to offer so far is a booking for Patterson and an optimistic punt from McNeil, 25 yards out, way over the bar. If Semedo could cross the ball with some sort of accuracy, Wolves would have got some joy by now. Wolves nil, Everton nil. So this set piece is a one that could cause Burnley a bit of problems. It's certainly within range. Yeah, and it's it's Douglas Luiz's range as well. We, we've we done a lot of work with Austin McPhee, the set-piece coach here at Villa, and we worked out that was his optimum range uh, where, the, where the free kick's from, because he gets the ball up and down very quickly. Vincent Company is still in the ear of the fourth official, Tony Harrington, and he's going back for a little bit more, so he's, uh, he's getting it in that right ear is Tony Harrington. But uh, Taylor was booked. Bailey's just having a word with Douglas Louise. This is just outside the D, but it's right of centre. Burnley have got every yellow shirt back in, in the penalty area in front of the whole tent. Douglas Louise with the right foot, or Leon Bailey with the left. Stuart Atwell blows his whistle, now walks towards a crowd of players, and then marks out with the, the spray that he wants everybody behind that. O'Shea had strayed. 
we wait again. After this, we're going straight to Molyneux where there's been a goal. You're listening to Five Live. Douglas Luiz, little clap of the hands. Bailey is also poised. It's Douglas Luiz, right-footed, into the wall, comes towards Bailey, off his chest, strikes it left-footed, blocked by Burnley again. Pat Murphy, you've had a goal. Yes, Wolves have scored, and Kilman, the captain, probably will get the, the, the honours for it, although it might well have just passed over the line courtesy of an Everton deflection. But the important issue here is that A, Wolves have scored through Kilman, and B, they produced a shirt with uh, Mario Simit Lamina's name on it in honour of their teammate because his dad died yesterday in France. Poignant moment, but a triumphant moment for Wolves. They lead Everton 1-0. Thanks, Pat. Brownhill with a shot, and on the stretch, he's put it wide. But uh, while we were hearing about that gesture at, uh, at Molyneux for Lamina's father, who's passed away, Burnley had a real chance on the counter-attack. Yeah, that's Bur Burnley's best chance. Um, Foster's done long lay for pace on Danny outside. Long lay should have been the first to the ball, and... He just, just doesn't present the pullback well enough uh, for the oncoming midfielder, which could have made it a really good chance. And the uh, the Brownhill effort, because he was on the stretch, he just couldn't generate the power, could he? No, he couldn't. He was on the stretch. He took it inside and just, just curled it wide in the end. Livingston have got a goal back at Fir Park. Motherwell 2, Livingston 1 is a latest score in the Scottish Premiership. 25 minutes in. Aston Villa 0. Burnley 0. We're on the World Service. PBC Sounds and 5 Live. But uh, Burnley have had a couple of encouraging moments in this uh, in this game so far for for Vincent Company. I think if I'm sat on the Burnley bench now and I've just seen that down the outside with Foster winning the ball against Longley, there'd be a few more of them balls going down there. Yeah, as uh, Burnley get another throw on the uh, on the right, hasn't really played a great deal of uh, of football. The uh, the French defender who's on loan from uh, from Barcelona. Certainly not in the uh, in the Premier League, as they've got a uh, a throw on the right, long looping throw over the head of O'Shea, almost reached Berger, comes back towards Shea, he's uh, shot his charge down, Brownhill then fires it in right footed, and Martinez goes down to his left to make the save. Well, there's uh, a lot to be encouraged here for uh, for Vincent Company at the moment, nil nil. Yeah, they're, they're working a long throw whenever they get within within the 18-yard box and they push everybody on. I, I just worry for them if they, if they lose the ball, there's a very good counter-attacking opportunity for Villa. But so far, they've kept it in and around Villa's box. Here is Diego Carlos. That's the voice of Dean Smith, recently appointed as head coach of the MLS side Charlotte, North Carolina. What will the weather be like at this time of year over there? I think it's about 12 degrees um, in our terms, which is, I don't know, 40 or something, 50, I don't know, in Fahrenheit, which they use. And when does your pre-season training start? Uh, we go on camp to Miami for two weeks on the 14th of January. Ooh, I think that coincides with a two-week break. I'm planning for five live. If, <laughs> if you need any media training for that two-week period. That's, that sounds good. <laughs> Here is uh, Watkins. Watkins into the area, finds Bailey. Bailey with a shot, scores! Watkins with assist, Leon Bailey left-footed, just underneath the crossbar, and away from the despairing dive of Trafford, and Aston Villa take the lead, 1-0 against Burnley. Yeah, Ollie Watkins does, does ever so well holding it up and coming across the goal and, and plays a, a square pass across to Leon, and he's only got one thing in his mind, which is to check inside and hit it, and uh, he's been one of the top goal scorers for Villa, he's, he's scoring and assisting quite a lot, and uh, he's in a rich vein of form at the moment. You know about Leon Bailey, he, you're right as well, about his goal and assists, he, he's involved in a goal every 77 minutes in the Premier League. It's a great stat. It's almost on a par with Erling Haaland. Haaland is the only player who's done it, I think his is 72 minutes. Right, yeah, and he, he's in a rich vein of form and he's getting a lot of love from uh, Unai at the moment as well. I saw a press release the other day of, of uh, Unai talking about how humble he was, how hungry he is, and that, that he'll just get better and better. Just looking at it again, I'm not too sure whether the deflection might have come off Del Quart, but just took it up that extra level away from Trafford. Yeah, it looks like he just took it away from Trafford. It came, comes off his calf and, and just rises, and Trafford has no chance. <laughs> well, the worrying statistic now for Burnley is that when they've conceded the first goal this season, 
It's happened on ten occasions. They have lost all ten games in the Premier League as uh, Diaby's just picked up a, a knock. Now, just before that goal, I think we were going to go somewhere else. We stuck with the goal and I've forgotten where we're going to go to. But it is. It's Alistair Bruce Ball at Selhurst Park. Uh, Palace 1, Brentford 1. We're approaching the half-hour mark in the rain at Selhurst Park. King Lewis Potter gave Brentford a second-minute lead. Michael Alise with the equaliser. Two chances for Brentford since. Lewis Potter shooting straight at Dean Henderson. And then a Nathan Collins header just wide from a Saman Godos cross. Palace 1, Brentford 1. That happens a lot normally when it's fast and frenetic. I haven't got the excuse today when we've only got five other reporters to go to. <laughs> Three kick meanwhile to Burnley. Goodmanson to take it, left-footed. On this near side, the left, and the header is flicked on and then volleyed in by Amdouni. And what a response for Burnley. Within two minutes of falling behind, Burnley have levelled, and it's Amdouni with the equaliser to silence Villa Park, apart from the travelling support. Villa won, Burnley won. Yeah, Villa don't normally concede a lot of set-piece goals as well, but they look like they get outnumbered at the far post. Uh, two centre-backs at the far post, one heads it back across, and they've got players coming in the other side as well to finish, and it was a great, great little finish with a volley. Goodmanson, who uh, swung it over, they're going to check this for a, a potential offside, but as it's headed out to, uh, to Amdouni, he has finished that on the edge of the six-yard box, just with a a right-footed volley it was O'Shea who got there I thought there might have been a touch from Berger as well but as you say both players were going for the ball and it was Amdouni who met it and into the roof of the net yeah it's a really good finish he caught it really well there's no offside there for me so uh, the goal stands and 1-1 at Villa Park I was right about the goalless draw as well I was well. just about to say that yeah you were right <laughs> And I won't, I won't forget. I won't worry about forgetting where the game was because I forgot as well. <laughs> 14 minutes to go to half time. Dean Smith is, is with us here at Villa Park, and Villa's lead lasted all of uh, of two minutes. As concert to Bailey, forward ball. Watkins flat stays down. Diaby was also in pursuit, and then Trafford was quickly out of his goal line. Just looked like there that. Burnley's defence had opened. He did. It was a good ball through, and uh, I think Oli was offside, and that's why he left it to Diaby, who, who was coming from an onside position. Burnley galvanised by that equaliser, but the ball is overhit by Vettinho as he looked to try and play Foster around the back. But they're encouraged by that way that they've responded. That must be one of the most satisfactory things for a manager when you see your side respond as quickly as how, as how Burnley have. Yeah, because it, it just shows you that they haven't been. They haven't been uh, too worried about going a goal down. They're going to stick to their game plan and work back to it. Got a good free kick and, and worked a good set piece for the goal. Ball from concert, looking for the run of Watkins. Trafford was there to gather that ball inside his penalty area. Villa 1, Burnley 1, BBC Radio 5 live here at Villa Park. A reminder that uh, Aston Villa's form in the year of the calendar year of 2023, 16 wins in the Premier League, 50 points. The most at home since 1983, when it was 18 wins and 57 points. As any Villa fan would testify, the, the good old early 80s. Such a successful period as Foster is played in, over the top, enters the penalty area for Burnley, back heels the ball and then the flag is up. It was a, a late flag and the referee, Stuart Atwell, I must Go admit, that's one rule that I don't like. And, you know, uh, John Stones got injured from it the other day. Um, if we know he's offside, then flag offside. Yeah. We're talking of Manchester City and John Stones. Mas Farouk is there today, and we've got an update now from the Etihad. Yeah, without him, a really good chance, though, for a City second. Bernardo Silva shot from a tight angle on the right, just going outside the left post. Walker has had a shot from distance as well. It's all Manchester City at the moment. They still lead Sheffield United here, though, by a goal to nil. Wolves lead Everton 1-0, Crystal Palace 1, Brentford 1, it finished Luton Town 2, Chelsea 3 in the early game at Kenilworth Road. Commentary to come from Nottingham Forest at 5.30. We've got 11 minutes to go to half-time here on 5 Live as Unai Emery. You can see their shape now, Villa as well in the back three and Marino wide left, Diaby this time coming wide right. It's interesting how they play with the ball and without the ball and their shape being so different. Well, here is the goal scorer for Burnley, Amdouni. 
He's up against Konsa, tries to go on the outside. Konsa, though, follows him every step of the way. Inside to Berger, back to the left-back, Taylor, midway through the Villa half. Delcroix, the substitute to O'Shea, inside the centre circle. Yellow shirts, black shorts, Burnley in their change strip today. Brownhill. Out it goes towards that far side to Goodmanson, the right. Back towards O'Shea once again. Diagonal ball towards Berger, able to turn. Berger now finds Amdouni in a bit of space, left-hand side of the penalty area. Amdouni with the cross, flicked on by Odebert and then eventually cleared by Jacob Ramsey. Could easily have had somebody attacking that. Yeah, they could. They, they've done well. They've, they've, they've actually uh, created an extra man on the top line, so they've got a five against four, and, and Ezri's had to tuck in. It allowed the space on the outside for the... Is it, who was the 25? Uh, is that Amdouni? Amdouni allowed the space for him. And he managed to get the cross, and they maybe f feel they should have done a bit better with that. Well, they look to try and get Odebert again, but around on this near side. It was a ball from Charlie Taylor. Played over the head of Bailey, but Odebert unable to keep that ball in play. It runs out for uh, for a goal kick. Ten minutes to go to half-time. Is uh, Diego Carlos collecting that ball from the goal kick and just trundling his way forward as Moreno is just jogging over the halfway line on the uh, the left-hand side. Long lay short of the halfway line. McGinn is available, but now he finds Conta instead. Conta on this near side, the right. Taylor goes towards Bailey, shows him on the outside, and Bailey will take that invitation. And then Taylor slides in. Bailey back to his feet does well because that actually doubled up with him and Odebert. McGinn now chips it into the penalty area. Cleared away by O'Shea, picked up by Amdouni. Burley now offside against Foster. The flag will stay down, but Foster is running forward. Foster enters the penalty area. Foster goes on to score. There's the late flag. Well, it'll get checked, but to the naked eye, he looked offside, but we had to wait before the ball is dispatched. And now we come the VAR check. Yeah, this, this might be one where if, if, if they score the goal now, they'll say, yeah, this is why they do the rule this way. But he, to the naked eye, he looks offside. Kilmarnock nil, Dundee one. I would still say he's offside, but looking at it again, it's tighter it's, than I probably thought. Yeah, it is. But these are the ones that Villa have worked really hard on in training. They catch so many teams offside. I think there's 30 or 40 more offsides uh, than anybody else in the Premier League this season. Well, we're, uh, we're not expecting this goal to stand. If you're a Burnley supporter listening to Five Live, I would still say he's offside. Yeah, but there's, a, there's, well. a, there's a trailing right leg of long lay that is... Yeah, it's, well, the lines will get drawn. Who's, but, whose boot's bigger than the other? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wasn't there a... Where was it? Was it, was it at Villa Park with the armpit of Firmino? Yes, it was, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, and we had the occlusion goal as well for Sheffield United. Remember that? Yeah, I, yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah. We had I, thought, one at, I thought you might. We had one at West Ham away as well. <laughs> yeah, the t-shirt line. But the fact that this is taking as long as it is suggests that it's tighter than we probably thought. Yeah, it does. I mean, the red line's up now, though. So he, yeah, yeah, he's offside. It is offside. Well, the eyes still not. The our eyes are still working. Yeah, they, yeah. Motherwell 3, Livingston 1, Kilmarnock 0, Dundee 1 is another latest score in the Scottish Premiership. And the goal, as we predicted, does not stand <laughs> offside against uh, against Foster. But what did you say to me oh, in the commentary 10 minutes ago? Get the ball to Foster. Yeah, down that side, he looks like he's got really good legs on him and pace. He, he looks like he wants a little bit of grass in front of him to run into. And uh, again, he's just got in down that side. So, offside, 1-1. And there's been a goal at Selhurst Park. Alistair Bruce Ball. Brilliant finish from Eberechi Eze. So Elise on the score sheet, Eze on the score sheet. The two players so vital to Roy Hodgson and Crystal Palace's performances in the Premier League. Wonderful left foot finish into the bottom corner. Palace 2, Brentford 1. Burnley guilty giving the ball away. Jacob Ramsey with a shot. Block comes in from Brownhill. It all came from a rather loose ball from Del Quart. And Villa almost punished them. Yeah, it was a really loose ball. He, he kind of plays it one touch. Um, the, the pass wasn't on inside, and I think it was John McGinn who intercepted, or, or Leon Bailey, and they've built a big chance then again with, uh, with Jacob Ramsey. Six minutes to go to half-time. Aston Villa 1, Burnley 1, here at Villa Park. 
corner kick to Aston Villa in front of the Holt end far side the left in swinger Trafford got something on it all in blue and then it was cleared away he's good at them Dougie he, he scored a few goals he, he's actually having a shot there from the corner <laughs> incredible, incredible uh, technique he's got it was uh, it had plenty of in swing on it and uh, it was awkward for the goalkeeper Trafford wasn't it it was and that's what it is really he's, I, I, I say loosely he's having a shot but he knows he's going to get the, the goalkeeper in trouble because he's got to, got to come across bodies at his near post James Trafford, who's only kept two clean sheets in his 20 appearances this season. So if we run through the Premier League earlier, Luton 2, Chelsea 3, latest scores, Palace 2, Brentford 1, Manchester City still leads Sheffield United by a goal to nil, Wolves 1, Everton 0, and it's 1-1 here as the header on by Foster will be seen back by Diego Carlos towards Martinez. And then it's now with Longley, who can run forward, and urged on by this capacity crowd of the, the Villa faithful at this impressive old stadium for what is actually the 100th league meeting in the top division for two clubs founder members of course of the Football League 1-1 it remains back to Manchester City Masferuki still all City Pep Guardiola Pep Guardiola even though he's been booked and happy City weren't given a free kick when Bernardo Silva was making the run forward he's been shown a yellow card by the referee still Manchester City 1 Sheffield United 0 he's already served one touchline ban hasn't he this season Pep Guardiola as Goodmanson caught a little bit late releases the ball downfield Oda Bear putting pressure on concert and it got a little bit sticky there but he got it out from underneath his feet and back to Martinez, four minutes to go to half-time. Yeah, he's a, he's a really good 1v1 defender, uh, Esri. He wouldn't have surprised me if he felt a little nudge and went down. And he's, he, he creates so many free kicks from those situations. Very rarely uh, does a, an offensive player get the better of him. Well, again, we, one of the six players, but you signed him twice, didn't you? I did, yeah. Signed him from Charlton for, for Brentford and then again, uh, obviously, for Villa. And he's, he's not let me down. Burnley won. There's almost a bit of confusion about whether Ollie was offside or not because everybody seemed to stop. Um, even Ollie after the after the goal stood there, so I don't know whether there'll be a VAR on this. Probably. Well, I, I looked to the assistant referee on this near side. The Burnley players are checking with the referee Stuart Atwell, who's. Uh, but the goal for the time being will go to a VAR review as everything does. Watkins had made the run, he's onside. Yeah, very, very much so. It was, I think it might have been Vitinho who was playing him on. And from there, it was just a simple cutback from the right-hand side and swept home by Diaby. Yeah. And you mentioned earlier about Burnley at quite a high line. Um, not much space between their lines. And it's them, them runs that Oli them balls that Ollie loves to get on the end of and he gets on the end of one, pulls it across and Diaby's in a really good position to tap it home bit of an inquest now taking place because uh, O'Shea, Delcourt they're exchanging words with Vincent Company but there will be, well as is every goal it's always checked but they are now on the screen it's been notified to the supporters for a possible offside and also in the fallout after that goal had been scored uh, Sander Berger was shown a, a yellow card as well yeah, and he, he went through on the back of Jacob Ramsey and I, I expected it to, to be given, but the, the ball hadn't gone out of play or stopped for a while. So, yeah, it was a poor challenge on Ramsey, which left him on the, on the floor. But to the naked eye again, for me, he looks onside. Yeah, so we both thought that the Burnley goal should have been ruled out for offside, and indeed it was. And we both think that this goal will stand, but we'll get VAR to have a look. So it's a, a rather busy afternoon for Peter Banks. But once again, you could just feel the, the joy of the game of football being sucked out of it by the Villa supporters. They want to celebrate the goal. There were just a few boos whilst they were waiting for that delay, and now they can cheer because the decision is no offside offence and the goal stands. Yeah, and Ollie Watkins has been really clever there because he can, he can see the line because he knows where the, the fullback is, and he makes a good run and he gets the ball where he wants it. 
So Watkins again with the assist, Diaby with the goal, and Aston Villa are back in front. Uh, Nusa Diaby with his fifth goal of the season, as we are now inside the last 60 seconds of this first half. Two on them to Villa. And Burnley are going to have to dust themselves down and bounce back off the canvas once again. And Ollie Watkins is on for a hat-trick of assists. He won't get the match ball, but he'll certainly <laughs> like that. He, uh, I mean, you talked before about Leon Bailey. Watkins, with his goals, gets the assists as well. He does, he does, and that's something he's really improved on this season. Um, you know, he's pleasing to see him getting so many more assists now. Here is uh, Concert with the ball down the right touchline, trying to release Bailey. And Bailey will get there before Taylor. Try to flick it away from Taylor. Seven minutes, seven minutes have added on time due to the, the VAR checks that we've had mainly. There was, uh, I think, one brief stoppage as well as McGinn. Right ball. ball to Moreno, rides up his chest and spotted for handball by referee Stuart Atwell. But Villa 2, Burnley 1. Yeah, that switch of play is on a lot for, for both teams, in fact, because they both teams' uh, defences are playing quite narrow. Uh, Moreno's getting in on the opposite side for, for Villa quite often. Trafford waits to take the free kick for, uh, for Aston Villa and eventually hits it away downfield as it's cleared by Douglas Louise. Bouncing ball is headed back by Taylor. So we're in stoppage time here, Villa lead 2-1. What's the latest at Molyneux, Pat Murphy? So are we, Ian, and the score is 1-0 to Wolves, but just now Everton their best chance. Delicious pass from the halfway line by Onana, bisected a couple of Wolves defenders, Calvert-Lewin in his stride, but Saar, the keeper, kept his eye on the ball, grabbed the ball just at the right moment to avoid a penalty or conceding a goal. Wolves 1, Everton 0. Thanks, Pat. The birthday boy, Ollie Watkins, then, with a, a couple of assists. He'll be desperate, though, to get on the uh, the score sheet here this afternoon as Burnley ball through. Outside. Foster, flag again will stay down. Foster forces a save out of Martinez, and again the late flag. That was probably the clearest of the lot. That was the clearest of the lot. You, th you saw it straight away. Uh, the uh, the flag was uh, late, and Martinez made the, uh, the, the save. But... We do put so much pressure though, on our officials, but that's the laws of the game now, you know, and they have to follow and abide by them, but they know themselves that, that they feel it's offside, but somebody, as we saw the other day, can get injured. Wait till they introduce Simbins, it'll put even more pressure on the match officials. Remember the days about a good referee, you never knew a good referee, always kept quiet, never noticed him. No, hard, that's hard right. to do that these days, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, very hard to do because they'd actually put, put in the frame all the time, aren't they? Certainly are. Burnley trailing 2-1, have a throw right-hand side, goes back, this is O'Shea, Delcoir outside the centre circle of his own half, the rain has, uh, has ceased here at Villa, but because of the presence of Watkins, he goes all the way back to, uh, to Trafford, Trafford, passes the ball to O'Shea, almost led in Diaby, as a result it was a hurried ball, I think uh, Moreno had his ankles wrapped by Goodmanson, and that'll be a free kick to Aston Villa on the halfway line. Uh, I don't think he's going to take any action, Stuart Atwell. We've already had uh, a couple of uh, players booked for uh, Burnley. Might just be a little talking to Berger and Taylor and Concer for, uh, for Aston Villa so far. But 2-1 uh, to the home side. But they are half-time at the Etihad. We'll be going around the grounds with uh, with Steve Crossman of Manchester City. Our leading Sheffield United at the break by a goal to nil. So there was never any chance for the bottom three to change after Luton were beaten at Kenilworth Road earlier. For Burnley and Sheffield United, they knew that they'd be entering the new year inside the relegation places. Tall order for all three clubs in 2024 that lies ahead Burnley Great. Oh, McKinn almost got Watkins away through the middle after some close control yeah really good tight control um, and a great little ball through and lucky it just ran through to the keeper which uh, Trafford will play out from the back 
O'Shea has gone quite wide on that far side, the right, to allow the right back Vitinho to push up towards the halfway line. Now O'Shea makes that run as Vitinho ran back, he dragged Moreno with him. And now Goodmanson looking for the run off the uh, through the midfield of Berger. Could uh, could see the idea, but it was an overhit pass. It went straight through to Martinez. It was, and Villa make that really difficult for the opposition because it's such a high line that you know if you over it even slightly, the goalkeeper's going to always be favourite. Here is uh, Martinez, his dark goalkeeper's jersey, short sleeve, rippling in the uh, the stiff breeze. As he tosses the ball out, Amdouni, actually hear the wind picking up off our uh, effects mic here as the uh, the flags getting a real buffeting on the uh, on the far side at Villa Park. But Villa lead by two goals to one. It would take them level with Liverpool on 42 points as they play their first game in the second half of this Premier League campaign. Delcroix gives it away. Conta now on the right-hand side. Ponce back with uh, Diego Carlos, diagonal ball, chip forward, headed up by Bettinho, Douglas Luiz jumps into Berger and the referee will give the free kick to, uh, to Burnley, who in recent moments don't seem to have had caused too much concern for Emi Martinez and the Villa defence. No, I think the first half in general, Villa have, have shaded it. Um, there's not been too many big chances for either team, really, but Villa have had more control of the ball. Um, you know, both teams look a threat over the top, though. Half-time now at Molyneux and Wolves. We've had an excellent festive period so far. Back-to-back -back wins over the, uh, over the Christmas period, leading Everton by a goal to nil. Contrast that to Everton. Back-to-back -back defeats against, albeit Tottenham and Manchester City, as McGinn is fouled by Amdouni. That will be a free kick, but in stoppage time. The seven minutes that were added on, we are inside the last 60 seconds as the rain has returned. John but McGinn, possibly the best backside in football since Kenny Daglish. <laughs> Kenny used his backside to good effect. He certainly did, and John McGinn does as well. Both Sc Scottish, incidentally. Yeah. Both number sevens. Both number sevens as well. Yeah. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> <laughs> Two on to Villa. The half-time whistle will sound ironically after seven minutes of, uh, of stoppage time here in the first half as, uh, as Foster. He's got a seven on his back too, but it's the 17 for Burnley who comes forward now. Left corner of the penalty area. Foster uses his strength. Uh, Longley went with him stride for stride, and through his persistence, he wins the corner kick, so this will be taken. He had a slight tug at him, I he thought, did. in the box as well, and he would have given the question, um, the, the referee a, a problem had he gone down with it. Uh, just feel that Foster fancies himself in a foot race against Longley at the moment. Half-time at Selhurst Park 2 as well, Crystal Palace 2, Brentford 1. Blustery conditions, Goodmanson with the corner kick, left-hand side, and the referee blows his whistle as it comes back out to Goodmanson. So there is the half-time whistle, Villa lead by two goals to one. What have you made of it, Dean Smith? Yeah, it, it's been a lot more even probably than I thought, uh, I expected it to be. Villa have had a lot more possession, um, but there's not been too many big chances from either team, really. I think the chances have been fairly even. Uh, Villa probably just about deserves to be in the lead. Well, it was Watkins on his 28th birthday, who actually, with an assist in the 28th minute, to set up Bailey for the first goal, but it didn't last long. Two minutes later, Amdouni with the equaliser, but then three minutes before half-time. Second assist of the afternoon for Watkins, swept home by Diaby. Half-time at Villa Park, Aston Villa 2, Burnley 1. Villa on course to go second in the Premier League this afternoon. Manchester City on course to go third. Half-time at the Etihad, Maz Faruqi. Yes, they lead 1-0, Steve. The pattern of play of this game very evident from the off. City with over 80% of the first half possession. Sheffield United limited to half chances. But a moment for Asula, edge of the six-yard area, which he didn't control how he would have hoped, and City were able to get it clear just before the break. The goal was a lovely bit of work from Rodri, picking up the ball from Foden. He made the run forward, shot inside the left-hand post. Since then, the 
been good chances for Bernardo Silva and in particular for Julian Alvarez. Pep Guardiola, which is apparently hard for me to say 10 minutes ago, will feel his side should be further ahead, especially with that moment for Sheffield United just before half time. And both City's boss and Kovacic have been booked in the first half. Manchester City won, Sheffield United nil. Two wins in a row for Wolves and they're halfway towards a third. Pat Murphy. And they deserve to be leading Everton 1 0. Everton, two chances to Calvert Lewin. Splendid save at his feet by the keeper, Saar. And then he turned it past Saar. Couldn't quite get anybody to turn it in at the far post. Apart from that, some fine passing from Cunha for Wolves. Huang elusive up front. Fair amount of chances. But the goal from Kilman stabbed it in from about one yard out after a fine instinctive save from Pickford. He was unlucky, but Wolves deserved it. Wolves won, Everton nil. Uh, both Palace and Brentford desperate for a win, both going for it. Half time, Ali Bruce Ball. Crystal Palace 2, Brentford 1. Every manager always needs their best players fit. Roy Hodgson is no different. Goals here from Michael Elise and Abere Eze digging Palace out of some early trouble after Keen Lewis Potter gave Brentford a second minute lead with a quite wonderful volley. Elise equalised with a volley of his own, converting Jordan Ayu's far post cross. And then Eze benefited from a Jean Philippe Mateta miscontrol. Palace got a little bit lucky there. It ran away from him. Eze was in the right place running behind him. He ran on to Tyrick Mitchell's pass into the penalty area and then finished expertly with his left foot into the bottom corner. Palace have only won one game at home in the league this season but at half time they lead Brentford 2-1. Ahead of January, Ali, there'll be a lot of clubs looking at Elise and Eze. I think oh. they desperately need to cling on to them. They do. I mean, it's, I said it right at the start of the report, Steve. Every manager will say, get them out on the field, get your best players out on the field, and you've got a chance. Palace have struggled for goals this season when they are both fit and firing. And Eze, you can see, is, is not fully fit yet. I watched him at Chelsea in, in midweek, and you can see he's not quite there. He's so important. He's got to be out there. And both of them just have that little bit of magic that makes the difference. It has made the difference here so far. Uh, halfway towards a Second home win of the season, then Crystal Palace. Let's go into Scotland. Remember earlier, Celtic went eight points clear at the top of the Scottish Premiership after a 2-1 victory over 10-man Rangers. What about third place Hearts? Half-time in their game against Ross County. Kenny Crawford. Half-time Hearts nil, Ross County nil. You wouldn't think this was third versus tenth because the visitors have been plucky and impressive in possession. Indeed, Ross County had the ball in the net just after two minutes, but Ben Purrington's header was disallowed for offside. Staggy striker Simon Murray then had a great chance the net is 12th of the season but Hearts goalkeeper Xander Clark saved well low to his left half time Hearts nil Ross County nil uh, Gavin Wallace was complaining about the wind at Pitodri, <laughs> so they've given you some rain as well yes they have indeed I feel sorry for those in continental corner I tell you that if you don't know Pitodri, there's an area of the ground that is not covered and in the north east of Scotland you need cover Steve <laughs> here at half time it's uh, Aberdeen nil St Mirren 1 captain Marco Harris third league goal of the season there's a difference between the two at the break at the time it was totally against the run of play Greg Kilty was released down the left hand side his cross found Mikel Mandron his shot was blocked, poorly cleared and then O'Hara stepped up to put his laces through it Kelleroos had absolutely no chance a few minutes later St Mirren should have doubled the lead Richard Jensen needlessly handled the ball from a Lewis Jimison shot Mark O'Hara stepped up for the penalty screwed it just wide of the left hand post Aberdeen though have created chances Leighton Clarkson with a snap shot on the angle at 18 out, Hemming was down to save well and Bojan Mioski had a volley at 29 minutes gone and it just whistled by the post so fingers crossed we get some more goals and the rain goes off for the second half Aberdeen nil, St Mirren 1 Two of the half times in the Scottish Premiership Kilmarnock nil, Dundee 1 and Motherwell 3 Livingston 1 into the Scottish Championship the leaders Wraith Rovers 1-0 up against Arbroath at half time Air United 1 Dunfermline 2 Inverness nil, Morton nil, Queen's Park 1 Adrianians nil. Uh, in Scottish League 1 bottom side Hamilton uh, sorry bottom side Edinburgh City trail Hamilton at the break by five goals to nil Hamilton second in League One Falkirk the leaders also enjoying themselves they lead Sterling at half time by four goals to nil uh, it's Montrose one Cove Rangers one Ruman Burrell the top scorer in the division another goal for him that's now 16 in 18 matches and it's Queen, South, Queen of the South one Annan one Scottish League two Clyde nil Stenhouse Muir the leaders one that's bottom versus top Elgin one Peterhead nil uh, and four far who were down to 10 players nil East Fife nil and in the National League so far this afternoon Barnet 
nil Southend nil Bromley who were second in the league have gone 2-1 up now uh, in their game against Ebbs Fleet uh, Kidderminster nil Boreham Wood nil Oldham Athletic 2 Hartlepool United nil and you're up to date with the football rugby union at sale on course as it stands to go top of the premiership this afternoon they lead by seven points to nil at Northampton Saints and the other half time thriller so far Saracens 22 Newcastle Falcons 16 will make our first trip to the city ground shortly remember at half past five full commentary of Nottingham Forest versus Manchester United before that we'll be back to Villa Park for the second half with Dean Smith and Ian Dennis we'll do all of that after the latest news on Five Live with Stuart Clarkson Listen on BBC Sounds this is BBC Radio Five Live Thank you thousands of passengers have been stranded after Eurostar cancelled all its services to and from London St Pancras for the rest of the day because of flooding in a tunnel South Eastern's high speed services to Ebbsfleet have also been cancelled today Health officials in Gaza say 165 passengers Palestinians have been killed in the past 24 hours as the Israeli army strikes targets across the territory. The southern border town of Rafah continues to see an influx of people seeking safety. Russia says it will retaliate for Ukrainian strikes, which it says have killed 14 people, including two children. Moscow says more than 100 others were injured in the attack on Belgorod. Two men have died after a house fire in South London. The Metropolitan Police says two other people have life-threatening injuries as well. Officers are trying to trace their families. The cause of the fire in Croydon is being investigated. The government's facing criticism for allowing the former Prime Minister Liz Truss to publish her resignation honours list. She made 11 nominations, mostly consisting of political aides and Conservative donors. Labour and the Lib Dems had called on Rishi Sunak to block the appointments. Downing Street says the resignation honours list is a long-standing and ongoing convention. Separately, around 1,200 people received a New Year's honour. They included Ian Russell, whose campaign to protect children online after his 14-year-old daughter Molly took her own life after being exposed to online images of self-harm. CJ Bowery was appointed an OBE. She founded the charity Sal Shoes, which gives children's shoes to families who need them in the UK and around the world. We work with baby banks, food banks, domestic violence refuges, um, refugee and asylum seeker centres, schools. Um, head teachers contacting us uh, saying they've noticed a number of children in the playground who have literally their school shoes being held together with rubber bands. That's CJ Bowery. That's the Five Live News. It's 4.01. BBC Five Live. The voice of sport. 2024. On Five Live. And Five Sports Extra. Coming soon. Wimbledon. The Six Nations. Formula One. Welcome to the three-time world champion club, Max Verstappen. And much more. Don't miss a moment. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is Five Live Sports with Steve Crossman. On Five Live, listen on BBC Sounds. And we'll be back to Villa Park shortly where Aston Villa lead Burnley by two goals to one in our three o'clock commentary game. Earlier, Chelsea survived a late fight back by Luton to hold on for a 3-2 win at Kenilworth Road. Cole Palmer scored two of the Chelsea goals. He also made the other for Noni Madwaki. So another case of what could have been for the Luton boss, Rob Edwards. I can sleep easier when we lose games, when we give it everything like that and we perform the way we do. You can't guarantee you're going to win or draw, but what we can guarantee is we leave it all out there. And we keep saying that, and I know I keep banging that drum, but it's important to me, it's important to the lads, important to the supporters that we do that. That was an incredible performance, and I'm immensely proud of the football club today. Are you disappointed that they didn't get the ball, hang the ball up under the bar in the first half as much as you did in the, in the second half? I just think it was difficult. Chelsea defended well. You know, we, we, we tried to do the right things in the first half, but they're a very good team with really good players. And we just found it difficult when um, you know, the game maybe hadn't opened up as much to create those spaces and create those opportunities. We changed the dynamic at half time. We, we made some some really brave and attacking substitutions and continued very much tactically in the same way but with different personnel and um, yeah look I really liked us today. Chong made a real difference in the running, running, running and Obeni on the right hand side as well he's got some ability that boy. He has the, the two of them made a very very good impact really pleased with Chong because he has been disappointed he's not been playing as much recently but that's how you get in the team and stay in the team as well I've just told him yeah look we were, we were excellent today really brave really aggressive and on the front foot in terms of our press took the ball we, we, you know, we had big, big spells in that game and created loads of chances against a top team. And am I right in thinking that Adebayo improved when Morris came on and therefore Cotton Morris gave them something else to think about? Well, that was the idea, to try and give them something else to think about. We felt Carton's qualities at that stage in the game then were, were needed. Um, we had momentum in the game and we felt it was the right change to make. 
So, yeah, possibly. They worked together very, very well. It, it wasn't necessarily a front two as, a, as you would normally have it or we would have had it in the past, but um, the dynamic, the way it was working and that stage in the game was the right thing. So Luton, 18th in the Premier League table, a point behind Everton, who were trailing 1-0 against Wolverhampton Wanderers at half-time in the Premier League. In Scotland, Celtic, eight points clear at the top after beating 10-man Rangers by two goals to one. So here's what the Rangers boss, Philippe Clement, made of his first Old Firm derby. It was a game that could have been a draw. It was a game that we could have won. It was a game uh, decided on details that didn't fail our side, but important details and football are important details, uh, every action. So um, we had more shots than Celtic in an away game without support of anybody here. Uh, My team showed braveness on the ball, created enough chances. Celtic was more clinical in these two actions and the second goal, it's really a world-class goal. How do you think your team played with 10 men? Because to come back to score a goal, uh, as you did, says a lot about the character of your team. And you've mentioned the character of your team often since you've come in. Yes, and uh, and they're growing and they're getting better and better in that. They could not do that two months ago, what they did here today. That's why I'm, I'm disappointed that we didn't get the points, but I'm more proud of them. If my team keeps this mentality and this braveness on the ball also, we're going to take a lot of points this, uh, this season. Uh, the Rangers head coach Philippe Clement will be back at Villa Park shortly for second half commentary of Aston Villa against Burnley Villa leading by two goals to one of course last game uh, for Aston Villa was a 3-2 defeat to Manchester United stirring comeback which also included a first Premier League goal for Rasmus Hoyland they're away at Nottingham Forest at 5.30 uh, in our full commentary here on 5 Live Sport that's where we find correspondent John Murray good afternoon John Hello Steve The new Nottingham Forest under Nuno Espirito Santo well, well, we'll see about that. They have <laughs> lost their last four home matches, don't forget. But, I mean, clearly what, what happened at St. James's Park on Boxing Day will have given them a lift. And uh, and Chris Wood with that excellent hat-trick that he scored. He's on the front of the programme today. I don't know whether that was pre-arranged or whether they've swiftly changed it so that, that he would be on the front of the programme. But like I say, you know, one of the problems for Nottingham Forest, one of the problems for Steve Cooper was the home form, the home results. So they've lost their last four home games. Mind you, Manchester United away from home have been struggling recently since I saw them win at Everton actually when they, when they played well won well at Goodison Park uh, at the end of last month uh, they've not won away and actually hadn't even scored a goal in their last three away games but maybe what happened in the latter part of the match against Aston Villa on Boxing Day night might might make them look different who knows yeah I mean just look because Villa are 2-1 up at half time in their game they have now scored exactly double the number of Premier League goals that Manchester United have this season which makes it all the more important that Highland finally got his first. Yeah, and uh, you know, clearly for Manchester United, for Eric Ten Hag, in the in the second half of the season, for that is what it will be after they kick off today in the Premier League. They need big things to happen. They need the big players to step up, become more consistent. They certainly need goals from Hoyland and and still we've said it before how many times this season they need Marcus Rashford to transform himself into what he was uh, in the second half of last season Thank you John full commentary of Nottingham Forest versus Manchester United at half past five we're already underway in the second half at the Etihad Maz Faruqi. Yeah and a good chance Steve for a second for Rodri and for Manchester City in this game the ball maybe came to him quicker than he was expecting about 20 yards out and he shanked it wide of the right pattern he's he had pretty much most of the goal to aim at really frustrated with himself after that half chance for City uh, 49 minutes on the clock here Manchester City won Sheffield United nil. Vincent Company striding back towards the dugout at Villa Park. Second half commentary now then in the Premier League of Aston Villa versus Burnley uh, with your commentary team, Dean Smith and Ian Dennis. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, the Burnley players have been out early. Aston Villa are just emerging now behind referee Stuart Atwell, led out by their captain, John McGinn. So the Burnley team, no changes have been made at the break. Trafford in goal, Bettino O'Shea. Del Quadro was a substitute in the first half. Taylor at left back, Brownhill Berger, Goodmanson, Amdouni, Odebert, and Foster, yellow shirts, black shorts for Burnley in the uh, in the second half. Here come Aston Villa now in their claret and sky blue shirts and white shorts. And I don't think there's been any alterations from Aston Villa. So with Martinez in goal at back four of concert, Diego Carlos, Longley, Moreno, Douglas Louise, McGinn, Diaby, Bailey, Watkins, and Jacob Ramsey. In the second half, they'll be defending the halt end and they'll be playing from 
right to left. What are you expecting in this second period then, Dean? Well, I think um, Vince and company will go in and say, listen, we're in this game still. They've caused really enough, enough problems uh, in the first half to know they can go and do it again. But they have to make sure that they don't, they don't give too many chances away to Villa. Uh, I just feel Villa are a threat, certainly, if they keep a high line with Ollie Watkins and... and um, so, certainly uh, the forward players, Diaby as well, looking to get in behind them. That's the voice of Dean Smith as we're back underway in the second half. We had seven minutes of added on time, so that's why we're late starting this second period on five live. As uh, Foster barged his way through the middle, forced Martinez to take quick action coming out of his penalty area to head it away. Now it's with, uh, with Moreno, two were uh, to long late. He's got, a, he's got a really good feel for that, Emmy Martinez, as a keeper-sweeper. He, he, he reads it really well and comes out and deals with it. It's a great tool as a centre-back to have that behind you as well. Yes, yeah, as uh, Villa looking for the ball over the top for Diaby, headed away by Del Quar. Two goals that they've scored in this game so far. They've extended their scoring sequence now to 24 games in the Premier League. They've scored in each of those games at home. The last time they failed to score, October 2022. It's the longest scoring run since they achieved 33 between 82 and 1983. So it's uh, a real fortress here that, at Villa That Park. wasn't a bad time to be a Villa fan as well. No. As we're reminded too as well with the... Uh, the, the commentary of Shaw Williams prepared to adventure down the left. And there's a good ball played in for Tony Morley. Oh, it must be. And it's Peter With. Yeah. A little bit earlier in 81, wasn't it? Well, it no, was, I know that was 82, 82. yeah. And I've just had a little chat with Gary Shaw, uh, you know, before the game. Yeah. It was, uh, it was a year when English clubs dominated European competition. Yeah, not even Forest two years on the trot before. Yeah. Ball played forward by uh, by Longley, headed away by Taylor, tucked in, Jacob Ramsey. Now is uh, won back by Berger, looks for the early release, and here is Foster, up against Longley. Foster comes on the inside, then drops to his knees far too easily. I thought he had the beating of Longley there, and then as he checked back inside, he showed too much of a, a willingness to drop to his knees, and the opportunity was uh, was lost by Burnley but they've won it back Goodmanson that out ball though is on every time yeah again it's that, that foot race between Longley and, and Foster and Foster's uh, winning it at the moment I'm Dooney with a shot left footed saved by Travis, uh, by Martinez rather but you highlighted that quite early on yeah I, I just the fact the first uh, the first ball down the side of, of Longley I never felt that Foster should have got there um, and he just told me a story straight away that he probably had the legs of him and uh, you know they've used that as a good weapon since. I think if Foster was to see that again, uh, the bare, barest of touches from uh, from Longley, he, uh, he might be a, a shade embarrassed the way that he dropped to his knees with, uh, with ease. Ball given away though by Burnley out of defence, here is Watkins, Watkins takes it on into the penalty area, goes down under the challenge from Pitinho, referees in a good position, says a goal kick. We'll go to Manchester City, Masvaruki. First sub of this game is a City one, Jack Grealish off, replaced by Oscar Bob. Difficult to tell if Grealish is injured, he did just take a tumble in the Sheffield United area, doesn't look entirely comfortable, but he has been subbed. Manchester City 1, Sheffield United 0. We brought you earlier Celtic 2, Rangers 1. Rangers do have two games in hand, but they find themselves eight points behind Celtic after that victory at Parkhead. We've got Forest against Manchester United to come with John Murray and Paul Robinson at 5.30 after Sports Report. And then tomorrow, Fulham Arsenal from 2. Tottenham against Bournemouth will be on Sports Extra also at 2 o'clock. FA Cup next weekend. And it begins on Thursday with Crystal Palace against Everton. Everton, who today are at Molyneux, another goal, Pat Murphy. 2-0 to Wolves, terrific goal made by the elusiveness and pace of Huang. Killer ball across the penalty area, and there was Cunha to roll it in. And now they're showing Mario Lamina's shirt again, number five, in memory of his father who passed away yesterday. Another touching moment. Wolves 2, Everton 0.
What a bumper Christmas it's been for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Oh, it certainly is, yeah. He's, he's done a great job there, Gary O'Neill, so far. And, um, you know, a good scoreline so far, so far for them. Yeah. That's uh, eight goals and on course for nine points over Christmas. So they lead by two goals to nil. It's two on to Aston Villa here, five minutes into the second half. Five live, the World Service and BBC Sounds. With, uh, with Burnley, Delcroix to Brownhill, lets it come across his body, runs forward now, right-footed. Goodmanson lets it run through, Bettini with an early cross, that was dealt with. Moreno comes under pressure inside his own penalty area, and it will be a goal kick, I think, to, uh, to Aston Villa. But Vincent Company applauding above his head, is uh, trying to offer encouragement to his, uh, to his side can't be easy when you're down there at the bottom and it's hard to pick up points yeah no it, it is tough and it's funny I'm quite a, a bench watcher when I am at games because I just like to see how the how the, how the managers are and um, you know today Unai's been very animated whereas I, I think Vincent's been a lot more calmer um, you know I think body language can give an awful lot to the to your players as well you know the message that you're sending them at times well, here is uh, Diaby. We'll have a look of concern at the moment. Will Vincent Company because Bailey with pace looking to enter the penalty area for that shooting opportunity comes out of the box, crosses the ball now to Moreno. Try to chest it. It just brushed across his midriff, forced him a little bit wider out to the left. Back with Douglas Louise. Challenge comes in from Brownhill. There was uh, Longley to pick up that loose ball as every outfield player is in the Burnley half. Filler defending the halt end. If you, those of you who know Villa Park are playing from right to left and Bailey gathers that ball in with an outstretched left leg on the right-hand side for Villa. Diaby now back with uh, with Konza. Waits, assesses his options. He's picked out Diaby looking towards Jacob Ramsey and gathered it in his six-yard box. And had to be as well for Chaffer, the Burnley keeper. Yeah, it's great, great pass from Esri Cons and a good run from Diaby, I think it was. I'd like to see Jacob getting across the goalkeeper there. Well, Trafford just drops the ball out. Still will not forgo his principles, Vincent Company. But they have actually collected seven points from their last six games in the Premier League. They'd only collected four from their first 13. But they... Uh, you look at what they've collected at the halfway stage, 11 points from 19. It's their fewest ever in a Premier League season. Two fewer than when they were actually relegated two years ago. So such a, a tall order to try and buck that trend. Hearts nil, Ross County 1 is uh, a latest scoreline. Hearts have been going well. Three successive wins that have gone into that game at, uh, at Tynecastle Well. But uh, Ross County, after back-to-back -back defeats, have got the goal. And, in fact, news of it from Kenny Crawford. Yeah, 55 minutes gone. It's Hearts now, Ross County won. Hearts going for that fourth successive win. But Ross County have been impressive today. And a great break down the right-hand side. Former Swansea midfielder Jan Dander releasing Simon Murray. He puts it across the six-yard box. Josh Sims went for it. But I think the final touch came off defender Alex Cochran, the Hearts defender. So it's Hearts now, Ross County won. Thanks, Kenny. Palace still lead Brentford 2-1. Manchester City are 1-0 up at home to Sheffield United. Wolves 2, Everton 0. Commentary to come from the City ground. Eight minutes into the second half. What have you made of the start of this second period? I think, again, Villa look in control a little bit. Um, they're, they're trying to minimise the threat of, of Burnley. They have the majority of the possession. They're not jumping out of their pockets at the moment to give Burnley the opportunity to play in behind them. So... Um, yeah, I think they're quite comfortable at the moment. The voice of Dean Smith with us here on BBC Radio 5 Live. As uh, Vitinho to Delcroix, just outside the centre circle. Bergen now left of the uh, the centre circle, forced back into his half. Watkins and Diaby are doing the pressing. O'Shea looks for the ball over the top. Vitinho has made the run. Goodmanson as well. On the half volley, he sends over the cross. Cleared away by Konza, who was covering as a right-back. Douglas Louise picks it up, now finds Leon Bailey. And Bailey, with a pace, twists Taylor one way and then the other. And he's still going on a mazy run and tried to work over the cross. 
but Taylor actually recovered and managed to get a, a block in and it goes out for a throw right down by the corner flag. Yeah, it's a problem that Burnley have every now and again. They've just gone onto the attack there and, and threw, threw a ball into the box. Esri Conza deals with it well and then all of a sudden they're out of shape and they have a good attacking opportunity. The, uh, the ball boys actually placed the ball down in the quadrant, hadn't seen it, it ricocheted off the uh, the corner flag and out for a throw. Nothing materialises from it, ten minutes into the second half, Burnley look to break. You'd still say that, Bur that Burnley are in the game? Burnley are definitely in the game and, you know, th their threat is definitely Foster. We'll find out if uh, Sheffield United are still in the game because there's been a goal at the Etihad, Mas Faruqi. Lovely goal from Julian Alvarez, City second, Julian Alvarez with the finish for all the hard work done in the build-up by Foden and before him down this left-hand side by Oscar Bob. Manchester City 2, Sheffield United 0. Well, for the games that kicked off at 3 o'clock, very much home comforts with Palace, Manchester City, Wolves and Villa all leading and Berger is going to get a yellow card and he was booked in the first half and Burnley are down to 10 men you yeah. might recall that he was booked after the uh, the, the goal earlier and yeah. he's just been shown a second yellow he, he was booked for the late tackle on JJ which led to the goal um, in the first half and then it's a poor throw in the threw it inside the pitch it allows Douglas to get inside and then he's just uh, du du Douglas Lewis has managed to win the ball off him from a square throw in gets the other side and he just pulls him back he pulled the base of the shirt and because it's the second yellow that can't be reviewed by VAR and Burnley's cause has just gone from bad to worse trailing 2-1 and down to 10 men and Sander Berger dismissed and therefore he will miss the trip to Tottenham in the FA Cup on Friday night so McGinn waits to take the free kick it starts from the throwing for me. It's a poor throw, and he's thrown it inside the inside the pitch where Aston Villa want them to throw it to. Douglas ends up intercepting it, and he he has to tug him back. McGinn out towards Bailey, cuts in, shot takes a deflection behind. It'll go for a corner kick to Molyneux. Pat Murphy. Another goal for Wolves from an unlikely source. Craig Dawson, their centre half. Everton's defence all over the place. A low cross into a pack penalty area. Dawson stuck his foot out. Thank you very much. Wolves, three. Everton, nil. Nine goals, nine points over Christmas. That will do very nicely for Gary O'Neill. 2-1-2 two two to Aston Villa. The corner is rolled short. McGinn gives it back to Douglas Louise. Plays it low. Diaby with a shot. Hit it first time. Left footed just over the top of the crossbar. Villa still lead 2-1. Alistair Bruce ball at Selhurst Park. And all over at Selhurst Park, Michael Elise at the double gives Palace a little bit of a cushion here. They lead Brentford by three goals to one. Classic Elise fed by Lerma, just glided in between defenders before calmly passing the ball into the bottom corner beyond the despairing reach of Mark Flecken. Class goal, Palace three, Brentford one. With their first win in nine, they collected just three points out of a possible 24 before then. As Douglas Louise hooks it goalwards, Watkins tries to get there. Del Quar actually tried to hold him back fractionally as the ball is put out of play by, uh, by O'Shea. And Villa now looking to ram home the, uh, the extra man. As there's going to be activity and Burnley are going to be making a, a, a change. And it's going to be Aaron Ramsey who's coming on. He actually made his Burnley debut against Aston Villa in the uh, match day three it was at Turf Moor when Villa won 3-1 at, uh, at Turf Moor so Aaron Ramsey is going to come on and he gets a, a really really nice ovation from the, uh, the Villa Park crowd as we go to where will we go and it's Hearts again. Kenny, you had another goal. Yeah, and this was not on the script, Ian. It's Hearts now, Ross County 2, and an absolutely fantastic free-kick strike by former Swansea midfielder Jan Danda. He's 25 yards out, right-footed into the top right-hand corner. Scotland international Xander Clark had no chance. Hearts now, Ross County 2. Thank you, Kenny. So uh, Hearts are 2-0 down at, uh, at Tyne Castle. And here, Aaron Ramsey has, uh, has come on. That will, uh, will have meant a lot, I would imagine, the ovation from the uh, from the Villa supporters to him, Dean. Yeah, it certainly will, and uh, makes it seven players I've gave my debuts to now. <laughs> <laughs> he joined the club, I think he was age nine when he first uh, first joined Villa. As I say, he made his debut against uh, 
Villa for his Burnley debut back in uh, back in August. So he has uh, has come on. Yeah, I brought. I took him to Norwich as well for the half season loan. He was outstanding for us there. Yeah. Also had a, a spell at uh, at Middlesbrough too. So he has uh, has come on as Goodmanson looks for the run of Foster. It was an arcing ball over the top. Foster with his pace. Oh, he almost got there. He was up on this occasion against Diego Carlos. Now the Burnley players are appealing for handball, as is Vincent Company. He never gave up the uh, the cause. Did Foster? He never ceases to be amazed. But at two and a half from Burnley, you can't see anything thinking it's handball. Oh, that did strike the hand. Of yeah, it's outside Diego the box, Carlos. though. It's outside the penalty box, though. Yeah. Yes, it is. And Foster, but again, his, his tenacity, and just to get something on it as he prodded it goalwards. Yeah, he's been their big, biggest threat all day. He's looked a threat in behind all day long. The referee at the moment is still being surrounded by the, uh, the Burnley players. It was uh, Amdouni who went off for, uh, for Aaron Ramsey, the, uh, the Burnley goal scorer. Only trailing by two goals to one. Now, the question is, though, would that have been the denial of a... I think if it's deliberate, but it's not deliberate, is he? It's, yeah. it's come off his come off his hip and it's his hand. Um, yeah, so I can't see yeah. anything else being done with that. Diego Carlos is all right. Pau Torres is going to be coming on. But both, as you say, though, both defenders have struggled with him today. Yeah, they have. I mean, it's almost like the second half. I've seen Carlos in a race with him more than Longley. Um, so that's maybe something that Villa have looked at, and maybe this change is one of the reasons. So uh, Longley is coming off, and Pau Torres is coming on. The Spanish international. Villa still lead by two goals to one. Company, though, still doesn't look too impressed with referee Stuart Atwell. He is still complaining about that decision and he's still furiously pointing to his hand and now his arms are out stretched open wide in the direction of Stuart Atwell we'll try and bring you as much live reaction as we can into Sports Report the results and the reaction with Steve Crossman in Sports Report from five before Nottingham Forest Manchester United at 5.30 I think it would have been very difficult for Stuart Atwell to see that as, as the game went on and not many people did no. apart from apart from Foster himself and, and Carlos so for, for VAR to overturn that would have been very strange here is uh, Pau Torres they've already had VAR and it was a correct decision rule out a goal for, uh, for offside earlier in the game that was in the first half since then they're now trailing 2-1 and they're down to 10 men with the burger sending off Moreno runs forward near side the left Coutinho tries to close him down, he plays it into Jacob Ramsey, he cuts the ball back, McGinn hits it first time, Trafford makes the save, low down to his right. He hit it firm and low, it had come through a crowd of players, it was a very good save by Trafford, but Villa are coming again, here is Diaby, beaten away by Trafford, edge of the area, Douglas Louise. oh he went with a curling effort that was just floated wide. It was a nice idea. Yeah, it was. Villa taking advantage of that man, man, the man extra they've got at the moment. Uh, some good work by Mourinho and JJ down the left-hand side, and uh, have a couple of big chances from it. Trafford with the save, first by by McGinn. Yeah, great effort by John McGinn. He tries to hide the ball from the goalkeeper using the defenders, and it's a good save. He's on a good goal-scoring run this season as well, John. Yes, he is. He's. Uh... He's actually matched his, his best return for uh, for Villa in the promotion season when yeah. he scored seven in the campaign of 18-19. And uh, that's his tally already this time around as Moreno carries it forward on the left-hand side. Flick header away by Taylor, only partially away. Bailey inside the penalty box. Conta flicks it back to Bailey. They link up well. Conta towards the byline. Wills it, pulls it back. And Jacob Ramsey inside the six-yard area skies it. Couldn't keep it down. Yeah. But they're creating chances now. They are. They're taking a, taking advantage of it, of the man the man extra. A really good run. Little give and go from uh, Esri Conza. Overlaps. Little give and go. Cuts it back. And JJ should be hitting the target there. And it should be 3-1. Jacob Ramsey with uh, his fifth successive start. Trafford's been told to hurry up by Stuart Atwell. 
64 minutes played, Villa still lead 2-1. They're looking for the goal to take the game out of the reach of the 10 men of Burnley. Yeah. Crystal Palace have come from behind, lead Brentford 3-1. City lead Sheffield United 2-0, Manchester City that is, and Wolves 3, Everton 0. You get the feeling that they sense more goals as well, Villa, at the moment. They're just looking to uh, get that little bit of a, of a cushion because whilst it is just the one goal and the way that Foster has caused problems throughout, you can never rule anything out in the game of football. <laughs> you certainly can't, no. Um, but the problems he was giving was mainly to Longley and they've now put Pau Torres on, so, you know, they're hoping that will shore up the, up the chances that Burnley have had. Well, most defeats are 14 after 19 games in a league season in the club's history. A season of toil if you're a Burnley supporter. And they're on course for another defeat here today. Uh, not helped by the dismissal of Berger as McGinn wins the ball back in the midfield and it comes back towards McGinn. He chips it forward, might drop towards Watkins. He goes to ground, referee keeps it alive. Jacob Ramsey in the end is challenged by Aaron Ramsey. Takes it away off his uh, toes and behind it goes from his younger brother's challenge for a corner. Great ball again from John McGinn. Everybody's expecting him to shoot and he's just stood the ball up in the middle. I think O'Shea manages just to, to win the header and it drops to Ollie. It is uh, going to be Douglas Louise to take the corner kick on this near side. 2 1 to Aston Villa. Douglas Louise waits. It's in front of the north stand, away towards our left hand side. It's another in swinger. Too much curl on that. That might be wind assisted, Dean. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, again, he's trying to put it underneath the goalkeeper. Um, you know, goalkeeper, but he doesn't need to, as you say. There's that one where Ezri's trying to win three kicks again, he's, he's managed to get it. He gets himself between his, the ball and, and the opposition player, and as soon as he feels contact, he goes down and wins a free kick. Well, that's exactly what happened, as Odebear was the one sent clear on the, uh, the left-hand side from Trafford's ball. Vincent Company is again. I think he's the best I've seen at Ezri at that. He wins so many free kicks. Yeah. He's uh, in the England fold, of course, for for last time with his uh, with his firm with his form rather. But he's he's uh, something which I think he's deserved as yeah. well. You know, he's like a Rolls Royce of a player. Or, you know, he doesn't look out of place now playing at right back as as well as uh, at centre back. Yeah, he's been on Gareth Southgate's radar for for some time. Here is uh, Moreno back with uh, with Pau Torres on the halfway line. Villa still lead by two goals to one now the ball goes square and Konza who we've just been talking about passes it back they've been patient at this stage are, uh, are Aston Villa let's get the team news from the city ground John Murray well the main news here Ian comes from Manchester United because Rasmus Hoyland is absent uh, we're told that he is unwell so not in the 20 that means Anthony comes back in that's Manchester United's only change as for the home side Yates is back in the Forest midfield as captain for the suspended Sangari and there is one other change from Nuno that is Dominguez starting with Hudson Adoy on the bench Thank you John Paul Robinson the former England goalkeeper will be with John commentary at 5.30 from the, uh, the city ground Matty Cash who missed the the game against Manchester United due to an accumulation of, uh, of five yellow cards not involved today because uh, not feeling too well Jacob Ramsey makes a run through from midfield left side of the penalty area cuts it back Watkins couldn't take advantage Diaby might but he couldn't take it left footed rising goal kick 2-1 Villa yeah another good work again down the outside by JJ pulls it back and uh, he hits a rising shot Diaby after taking a good touch Another goal at Tynecastle, Kenny Crawford. And Hearts are back in it, Ian Hearts 1, Ross County 2 in the Costa Rican forward. Kenneth Vargas has rolled it neatly under Ross Laidlaw after a bit of a defensive mid mix up by Ross County. It's Hearts 1, Ross County 2. Burnley's only success here at Villa Park in since 1973 was in 2015. They've only had eight trips to give it a little bit of context between now and then but they are trailing here by two goals to one they went midway through the second half as we'll go to Molyneux, Pat Murphy Huang is irresistible for Wolves he nearly scored twice in two minutes wonderful save from Pickford to deny him and just now a brilliant conversion from another counter-attack but ruled marginally offside Wolves really impressive, they've beaten Everton 3-0 Match of the day tonight, you can see for yourself 10-25, BBC One Aston Villa 
with Pau Torres. Left footed ball. Taylor tucked in the left back, chests it back towards Trafford. Throws it now out towards Odebert, midway through his, uh, his own half. But straight away he's forced to go back. He couldn't get past McGinn. No, he couldn't. And uh, I can see the, the bench of the Burnley staff at the moment having a chat and how they can change it because, you know, Villa look like likely to get the next goal. Um, they've had a number of chances to do that. Well, here but is Jacob Ramsey with a cross. Watkins tries to turn. Was he pulled back? Ball kept alive. DRB again can't hit the target. I think this may go to VAR. I think he does get pulled back. It looked like he'd been hauled down. Everybody plays on and gives him the chance and says it was to advantage over, I don't know. You'd still expect Diaby to hit the target, wouldn't you, Dean? Yeah, he's had he's had a couple of really big chances and he's both of them have been rising so far. It was uh, Del Quart who had, uh, had made the challenge on, uh, on Watkins, but the fact that the Trafford is going to take the goal kick will tell you that VAR must have already had a look. There's that curling effort from Diaby was uh, sent flying over the crossbar. 20 minutes remain. Villa just can't get the, the goal to take them out of Burnley's reach. No, they'll be hoping that, you know, uh, the chances that they've had don't come back to bite them. Well, it might bite them here. Foster is sent away, and Foster has equalised. I think he might be offside, though. I don't know. Goodmanson got the faintest of flicks. Foster, who's been a constant menace for the Villa defence, was away, and he latched onto that, and right-footed, buried the ball past Martinez. Aston Villa 2, Burnley 2. He's been the biggest threat to Villa all, all game. And another ball over the top. He gets on the end of it and it's a great finish at, at Martinez's near post. There will be a question mark about whether he's offside because he was right on the line. He has caused so many problems. The flick from... He's onside. He's onside, definitely. Pau Torres did try to step forward, but he just had the strength. It's a great hit as well. And an excellent finish. Yeah, great finish. He's been the outstanding player for Burnley uh, today. Well, there was nothing that Moreno could do about that, and he only had one thing on his mind. They're saying checking goal for a possible offside. He's already had one goal ruled out. We, on that occasion, Dean and myself, thought that the, the goal should not stand, that it didn't. But on this occasion, we think he's onside. But yeah, it, I think he's onside. But in fact, just looking at the lines of the grass. Is it Carlos? Yes. Diego Carlos plays him on by the look of it. Yeah, so this should stand. And we said that Burnley had stayed in the game. They said that they'd have that chance and the Burnley fans can celebrate. We would think they can celebrate. And I was just saying that Villa were hoping not to rue the chances that have just gone begging yeah. over the last 10 minutes. Yeah, you called it, absolutely. And could Burnley, whose last three visits to Villa Park have all been drawn, could they claim another point here? Because now the 10 men of Burnley, Berger sent off in the second half, have got something to hang on to. They certainly have, and I think the, the change they're going to make might be to tighten things up for them. I'm not sure who's coming on at the moment. Trezor, it's going to be a double change, yeah. and Roberts who appears to have fallen a little bit out of favour, Connor Roberts. He's not started a game since the 21st of October, but he has been a, a substitute in three of the last ten. There's been another goal of Patodri, Gavin Wallace. There has indeed, and the Dandy Dons are not happy whatsoever. Aberdeen Nelson, Marin 2, Jonah Junga, uh, the back post. It was a great ball out from Scott Tanza, evaded the entire defence, and all he had to do was just tap it home from five yards. Aberdeen Nelson, Marin 2. Thank you, Gavin. So the double change is being made. Odebert is the player who's come off. Trezor has come on to replace him. And then the other change is Goodmanson who's come off and Roberts comes on. So Goodmanson who got that flick header on his 300th appearance in English football to set up the assist. And Roberts will replace him on the right-hand side of the, uh, of the midfield. And we've got 12 minutes remaining of normal time. 2-2 and Villa only once before under Unai Emery have ever gone three games without a win it happened in February of this year it might be a Christmas that hasn't really might have produced the presents but not the points yeah I mean 
they deserved to beat Sheffield United but didn't deserve to get anything out of Manchester United with a defending and today they haven't taken their chances at the moment there's still time for them but uh, they'll have expected to win this game yes they would looking at a return of two points from a possible nine over the, uh, the festive period and you think that they're facing two sides in the relegation zone in Sheffield United and Burnley then many people would have expected a maximum return in those two games at least but 2-2 with a quarter of an hour remaining Diaby who squandered a number of chances in the second half right hand side Del Quar goes towards him those nine outfield players are going to work so hard for the yellow shirts of Burnley BBC Radio 5 Live BBC Sounds and the World Service but 15 successive home wins set a new club record ended against Sheffield United looking to recover our path in the winning in the words of Unai Emery and get back to winning ways not so I'm also not sure if he looks for, over his shoulder at the bench what he's actually going to change it with they haven't got um, John Duran maybe uh, but they haven't really got Zaniola come on and scored against Sheffield United but they haven't really got too many choices no. offensively no they haven't they're uh, actually only named eight on the bench as well today there's been another goal at Tynecastle, Kenny. Hearts are level, Hearts 2, Ross County 2, and it's that man again, Lawrence Shanklin, 17th of the season, swatted it low into the bottom left-hand corner. Hearts 2, Ross County 2. 14 minutes remain at Villa Park. The Burnley voices you can hear celebrating in the background. Watkins with a little touch might rush to Moreno instead. Jacob Ramsey takes it on for the Claret and Sky Blue shirts. Douglas Louise returns the ball to the left-hand side. Moreno goes towards the byline. Left-footed cross. It's a good one. Watkins with a header. Couldn't get it over the top. Yeah, and it goes out for a goal kick. It's almost like he, he got up there too early and he never got over the top of the header. Um, great little stand-up ball from Alex Moreno, though. I think we're going to go to Selhurst Park now, Alistair Bruce Ball. 13 minutes to play, Crystal Palace closing in on a first win in nine Premier League games. They lead Brentford 3-1, Neil Mope off the bench for Brentford has given Palace a scare 25-yarder that came back off the bar. If Brentford lose this, it'll be a fifth defeat in a row, Palace 3, Brentford 1. The amount of added on time will be interesting. We had seven minutes in the first half. There's been the exact time now for the goals that are awarded and VAR checks. I would think another six seven yeah, minutes easily I think it's got to be substitutions as well that we've had so uh, although we have 13 minutes of normal time remaining that means nothing nowadays no, does it and especially when you consider that they're down to uh, to 10 men fatigue could be a factor as Unai Emery tries to whip up the Villa Park crowd as he paces from side to side he's still trying to do it acting as a cheerleader and there's a, a little bit of a roar from inside Villa Park. Diego Carlos chips the ball long. Vitinho goes to challenge Moreno, tries to roll on the inside of him, goes to ground, Villa win a free kick down yeah. by the byline. I think Unai's getting frustrated because the, the, the fans seem frustrated at not moving the ball fo forward a little bit quicker, but it's not his way and he's got his processes. He wants them to stay behind the, the players. So Douglas Luiz is going to take this free kick down towards the uh, the tunnel area. Sander Berger, when he was initially sent off, wandered towards the halfway line and then realised where the, the tunnel was here at uh, at Villa Park. Had to redirect his uh, his path. 2-2. Douglas Louise waits to take the free kick. Burnley have every yellow shirt back inside the penalty area. It's played short to Bailey. Bailey enters the penalty area left-hand side, pulls it back, Diaby towards McGinn, places it, still hasn't been dealt with, cleared away now by Delcroix, lifted forward by Concert, runs to the edge of the area, nicks it on the outside, McGinn right-hand side, stands over the cross towards the far post, it drifts out of play for a goal kick, and it remains 2-2. Yeah, great composure from Esri Concert, he was the last man, but he just lifted the ball over the Burnley player and put John McGinn in, and he just crosses it behind the goal. When I read out that stat at the start of the afternoon that only in the last nine Premier League meetings has the home team won one of those games, I thought that's going to change today. I really did. And especially it still might. Them, well, especially with them going down to ten men as well, you didn't expect them to come back. And Villa have had chances to have put the game out of sight. But Dean Smith highlighted the prospects that Lyle Foster was causing problems and his words have proved to be 
absolutely spot on because it's Foster that could pick up a precious point for Burnley. They're frustrating now the home crowd who are getting a little bit restless as time ticks away. Moreno inside McGinn back to Douglas Luiz forward ball now to Jacob Ramsey. Ramsey inside to Douglas Louise, who shoots right footed. That was going to pose no problems to Trafford, who makes the save. Dean Smith. Yeah, it wouldn't have been the choice that I would have wanted from Dougie then. Villa have got the numbers in and around the box, and he tries a shot from 25 yards, which is not really going to trouble the goalkeeper. So in the Scottish Premiership, earlier Celtic beat the 10 men of Rangers 2 1. Latest scores Aberdeen 0, St Mirren 2. Hearts have fought back. It's now 2 2 at home to Ross County at Tynecastle. Kilmarnock 0, Dundee 1, and Motherwell lead bottom of the table, Livingston, by three goals to one. And in the Premier League earlier, Luton Town 2, Chelsea 3 is how it finished. Two goals for Cole Palmer. Latest scores, obviously 2 2 here at Villa Park. Crystal Palace lead Brentford 3 1. Manchester City lead Sheffield United 2 0 and Wolves lead Everton 3-0. We've got commentary of Nottingham Forest against Manchester United at half-past five after sports report. That is coming up in about 15 or 16 minutes' time. By then, we should have just about finished. Although it might be tight if we have the allotted added on that we're expecting. Yeah, it looks like John Duran's game ready to come on as well. Here is Jacob Ramsey. Turns, releases it, left-hand side, Moreno with a cross, blocked by Roberts, comes back to Moreno, delivers it again. The Welsh international blocks it for a second time. So the Colombian striker will be coming in and coming off the bench. And the player he'll be replacing is Diaby, who's missed a few chances, Dean. Yeah, he has. He's, uh, he's one who you'd have felt would have taken then chances as well. He's just hit them on the rise a little bit and they've both gone over the bar. They've got round the outside a little bit too easy at times, Villa, and they've cut it back, and it's been Diaby both times who probably should have scored with both. Well, the Colombian international sign from Chicago, Fire, coming on for his 25th appearance in the Premier League. Every single one of them has been a, a start. He's hoping to add to his tally of four goals. He goes right into the mix. It's a corner kick to Aston Villa, 2-2. Douglas Luiz to take it. Didn't beat the first man at the near post, it was Conta who tried to jump over it and the referee's actually given a free kick, or is it a goal kick he's given to uh, to Burnley. Anyway, it's gone in favour of, uh, of Burnley with eight minutes remaining. Yeah. Speaking to a couple of the Villa staff, um, you know, talent-wise, John Duran, they, they, they rave about, they said the talent that the boy has got is incredible. Um, just need to direct it in the right direction now. Well, he's, uh, he's 20 years of age, he's tall, maybe uh, still a little bit raw, but uh, the ball back by Pau Torres again. Foster was after that, but the referees actually stopped play because there's been a, a clash of heads between Brownhill and McGinn, who is down. And so, although while Brownhill's back to his feet, McGinn at the minute is on his knees, but in a lot of discomfort for... Uh, he was caught by a, a trailing arm of Brownhill. Yeah, it certainly was. I don't think he's actually meant it, but he certainly caught him on the cheekbone. Brownhill's got up early and he's, his arm's come out and it, it John, and it, it takes a lot to keep John down. Well, he's, uh, he's back at the moment on his feet, dusting himself down. I'll tell you what, looking at the next league fixture, albeit in the middle of January, but Burnley play Luton Town which would be a... That would be a big fixture. Big That's fixture sure. indeed. Kilmarnock have equalised at home to Dundee at Rugby Park. Kilmarnock won, Dundee won. But, uh, and it's at Turf Moor as well, where they have had a dreadful time of it, as we've uh, talked about. But if they could get something from this game, it would give them something to uh, at least build on for a Luton Town side that have been doing very, very well of late albeit they lost today by three goals to two but they did stage a late fight back showing signs we've had show have already showed signs of finding their feet in the top flight despite being written off as McGinn waits to come on temporarily it's 10 against 10 
McGinn's got to wait the 30 seconds. Moreno inside. Now he's told to come on by referee Stuart Atwell. Under six minutes of normal time remain. 2-2 it remains. Five live. Here is Konsa coming forward. Konsa with the cross. Too far over the head of Jacob Ramsey. Out for a goal kick. Burnley were defending in depth and in numbers. Yeah, they've been really disciplined as well. They've not had any defenders jumping out of pockets where they can get played around. Um, you know, since the goal, I think they've been fairly comfortable. Villa haven't created too much since that goal. No, there was a period, after, particularly after the early sending off of Berger, where you thought they could get overrun. Yeah, I mean, they had three big chances. Uh, Jacob Ramsey's put one over the bar, and Diaby's put two over the bar. So they had some really good chances that they just haven't taken. Flick header by Foster. Roberts then delivers the cross that the substitute threat or offside on this near side. But again, it was Foster has been such a handful. Yeah, he's been a handful for the centre halves all day today. I've been really impressed with him. Um, you know, he likes to run in behind. He's got got good strength about him as well, and he's he's been their best player. Douglas Luiz, who's playing with a, a swab inserted in his left nostril coming forward under five minutes remaining and Villa still can't find a way through 2-2 they're being patient Unai Emery trying to get his instructions across Pau Terros will run forward Moreno Vitinho makes the challenge on Moreno body language of uh, Moreno Looks exasperated there with his shoulders dropped. Go yeah. out towards the far side. I think he's wanting the ball a little bit earlier than he's getting it at the moment. Bailey. Oh, well done. Bailey accelerates, beats his man, pulls it back. Aaron Ramsey, that might be a penalty. The referee's having a look at it, and he's given it. I wasn't sure there was contact with the naked eye, I must admit. I think it was Aaron Ramsey who's saying, I got the ball. It just looked like it was nicked away from him. These are always big now to overturn if the referee on the field has already given it. I think he looked to his linesman for it, to be honest. Well, Stuart Atwell waited and waited and waited because it was Bailey who pulled it back and it was just taken away before Ramsey made the, uh, the challenge. It was on Duran. That's not a penalty. <laughs> That's not a penalty. Is that enough to make the player go over? No, it's not. Uh, but it's a big thing to get overturned now with, uh, yeah. with VAR, VAR. You see, at the time, I thought it was. I, I just called it saying, was it? But then I've looked at it again, as now Jacob Ramsey and Connor Roberts are getting involved in a little bit of tete-a-tete. -tete. Stuart Atwell might... He's got his yellow card out. He's going to show a yellow card. But then you see, is it a clear and obvious error? To get to they get for the fourth official, sorry, the Peter Banks, the VAR, to get Stuart Atwell to change his mind. It depends what Stuart Atwell has actually said. If he said there's contact with the bottom of the boot, then there's contact on the bottom of the boot. But is it enough for the penalty? No, it's not. Well, Jacob Ramsey is the player who's going to go into the book. The Villa player is booked. Aaron Ramsey, the former Villa player, and his brother is the one who has conceded the penalty let's give the penalty and the penalty stands and it's going to be Douglas Louise he's going to he scored all four penalties for Aston Villa this season I hope I don't put the block on him but his free kicks and set pieces haven't been as good today it's 2-2 two, two. Two player, minutes remain. For the player to be standard, but he's been excellent on, on, on penalties so far. Douglas Louise waits. Trafford, who's conceded both of the Premier League penalties that he's faced this season against Palmer and Isaac, waits all in blue on his goal line. Douglas Louise stands over the ball. It's 2 2. Burnley are down to 10 men. Trafford now is jumping up and down on his goal line. It's a straight run up for Douglas Luiz that takes him to the edge of the penalty area. Douglas Luiz looking to make it five from five from the penalty spot against the ten men of Burnley. It's a long wait. He's not a man to be hurried, Douglas Luiz. He's taking his time. Now he begins the run-up, slowly moving away to his left, stuttering run-up, still stuttering, right-footed, in off the underside of the crossbar, five from five, Villa back in front, and it looks like they will end a great year on a high after all, Aston Villa three, Burnley two. Great.
great penalty. He, uh, there's one, that's one that goalkeepers doesn't stop. I, I was just looking at Ezri Kondo on the far side of the pitch and he almost fell to his knees, such as the relief of get, them getting that goal. The penalty award converted by Douglas Louise and you can feel the relief inside Villa Park as there has been a goal at Aberdeen. Gavin Wallace. It's another penalty up here as well. Ian Greg Kilty steps up from the spot. He went down the middle and high. Kelarus had no chance. There was a lengthy VAR check as Oyesanya was brought down inside the box and it's went bad to worse for Aberdeen. Aberdeen nil, St Mirren three. Full time at Manchester City, Masferuki. It's finished. Manchester City two, Sheffield United nil. Alvarez with a simple finish, sealing it in the second half after Rodri's opener in the 14th minute and a first clean sheet in nine in the league for City as well. Full time 2 0. We're nine minutes into added on time. The board has just gone up. So nine minutes of stoppage time. Villa three, Burnley two. So Manchester City will go to 40 points. They will go level with Arsenal. But Aston Villa are going second. Level on points with the leaders Liverpool. Unless Burnley can conjure up something in stoppage time. They are apoplectic on the Burnley bench at the moment both Vincent Company and Craig Bellamy are on yellow cards and the referee is coming over to the Burnley bench and I sense that one of them could be getting a touchline ban for that outburst we'll wait and see because Stuart Atwell has been alerted and it is to one of the coaches it is not to Vincent Company they've had a tag team down there and said they haven't they <laughs> by the look of it but I can understand the frustration from Vince Company because that was a very, very soft penalty. You know, uh, Aaron had took a touch, he didn't realise uh, the player was coming in behind him. And he's, he hasn't touched him enough to make him go to the ground. But the officials have given the, the decision. Kilmarnock have got an injury time winner at Rugby Park, it would seem. Kilmarnock 2, Dundee 1 in the Scottish Premiership. Great noise now inside Villa Park. They've had to keep the Villa faithful waiting. But that goal officially timed in the 89th minute as Dendonko will be coming on. As the ball up towards Foster, a little flat-footed, unable to gather it in and it will run away from him and through to a goal kick. So Leander Dandonka will be coming on and the player going off is going to be Leon Bailey. So this is very much a, a defensive move by Unai Emery. Yeah, it certainly is. I think he'll move John McGinn to that side now just to make it nice and solid, nice and tight. Um, but he's been good again. Leon Bailey scored the first goal and he's been a threat on the outside all the time. So uh, Dendonka is on. It was his first Premier League start of the season against Manchester United. He'll come on to try and shore things up as we have another six minutes remaining of the minimum of nine to be added on. And it's Aston Villa 3, Burnley 2. Motherwell 3, Livingston 1 is how it's finished at Fir Park in the Scottish Premiership. So another defeat at the bottom of the table, Livingston, as the downward header for, uh, for Burnley. Aaron Ramsey, and then it's a ball that is hit over the top by O'Shea towards Foster and through to uh, to Martinez and for Villa they uh, they extend this unbeaten run in the Premier League now to 17 games since Arsenal were the last team to triumph here in February 11 in all competitions Everton won in September in the League Cup that'll be uh, a foul from uh, Duran on the far side Dundee, it wasn't a winner at Rugby Park because Dundee have actually got an equaliser. So Kilmarnock 2, Dundee 2, and Aberdeen 0, St Mirren 3. So after back-to-back -back wins for Aberdeen, back-to-back -to -back defeats for St Mirren, that is a, a bit of a turn-up. And in fact, it's, uh, it's full-time, Kilmarnock 2, Dundee 2. Manchester City have won, we know that, 2-0. Full-time now at Selhurst Park, Alistair Bruceball. Crystal Palace 3, Brentford 1. First win in nine games for Palace. They move above Brentford in the table. Michael Elise and Ebere as they show in their class their importance to this Palace team. Two goals for Elise, one for Eze. Five defeats in a row for Brentford. Palace 3, Brentford 1. It was Elliot Tybo, incidentally, who was uh, shown the yellow card on the, uh, the Burnley bench. As they're still playing, Wolves against Everton. Wolves, though, leading 3-0. 3-2 here, so a lot of goals for match of the day tonight, 10-25 BBC One commentary to come from Forrest 
at 5.30 with John Murray and Paul Robinson. Full time now at Aberdeen, Gavin Wallace. Yeah, Aberdeen Nil, St Mirren three goals from O'Hara, Ayunga and a late penalty from Greg Kilty puts St Mirren within a point of Kilmarnock and a cushion between them and Hibbs in fifth and sixth. It's Aberdeen Nil, St Mirren three. And it's finished at Tynecastle, Hearts two, Ross County two. Stoppage time, Burnley trailing 3-2, Roberts with a long throw, right-hand side, headed out by there's Durant. A, there's a threat here. Ball played back by Vitinho, hit forward by Trafford. Taylor couldn't gather it in, left corner of the area, does keep the ball in play though, back towards Trezor. Trezor now with a cross, and trying to attack it was Roberts, and it runs out of play for a goal kick, and I think more in hope companies appealing for a penalty from the fourth official really good defending from Moreno then he takes him under the ball um, they're both having a little tug at each other but he takes him under the ball really well there we'll go out, try and bring you live reaction if we uh, if we can from uh, from Villa Park if we don't before the Forest Manchester United game then you'll hear it at half time there's always the football five live daily football part that's available to your usual outlets Full time then, let's use it for that game at Tynecastle. Kenny Crawford. Hearts 2, Ross County 2. Hearts, we are going for their fourth win on the bounce, but in the end they'll be grateful for a point because after a first half to forget, the hosts had to fight back from 2-0 down in the second. Kenneth Vargas and Lauren Shanklin, the goals, bringing the jam tarts back into it. Hearts 2, Ross County 2. Martinez has just been shown a yellow card for, uh, for time-wasting and then he looks to say the referee what me. I, I understand a little bit from Emmy because Trafford was doing exactly the same when it was 2-2. Um, you know, so the referees have got to be consistent, but Emmy is known for that anyway. But maybe uh, previous has got in the way of um, you know how he's actually ref the game today. Three minutes remain of stoppage time. Aston Villa leading by three goals to two. Durant will try and get there before Vitinho shrugs him off, plays the ball back. Full time at Molyneux, Pat Murphy. 3-0 to Wolves, irresistible performance. Kilman, Cunha, Dawson, the goal scorer. Everton very poor. Wolves 3, Everton 0. Thank you, Pat. Back it goes then to Martinez. Sports report is coming up. We are at now 5 o'clock, but we've still got at least another two more minutes as the referee gives a free kick. And it gives a free kick to Burnley that Douglas Louise wants to literally place on the spot himself as Burnley want to take it and they're going to leave it for Trafford on the halfway line. Yeah, I think Douglas thought it was his free kick. <laughs> so the last two minutes remain. The ten men of Burnley still fighting. But it's a high line from Aston Villa. I think, I think we may get to 100 minutes today. Here is Trafford. I don't think you're wrong. Trafford goes long with a free kick. Bouncing ball. Headed away by... Durant, picked up by Watkins, plays it out towards McGinn, runs forward over the halfway line, far side. Now looking for the run of Concer, who's going on ahead of him, but Trezor will get there first, and Trezor plays it away. That was a, a bit of a late bump by McGinn, but that's going to result in a yellow card for the Aston Villa captain. He knew exactly what he was doing there. He did. If there's a place to give a foul away and a yellow card, that's the place with a minute to go. Well, we're past the deadline now of the five yellow cards that would uh, would bring about a one-match ban. You've got to accumulate ten before you're going to get a, uh, a next suspension with the accumulation of yellows, but Burnley do hit it long. Uh, John, John McGinn will certainly know that as well. <laughs> Not the, uh, and eventually a free kick goes in favour of Aston Villa. So we've got about 40 seconds remaining, 3-2. What have you made of the game? Let's get your... It's, summation now. it's been a really interesting game I thought it was pretty even at, at half time but Villa had a slender lead and then um, once, once uh, Sanderberg got sent off Villa had some really good chances to take the game out of sight um, Lyle Taylor scored Lyle Foster sorry Lyle Taylor Lyle Foster's gone through and, and equalised and uh, I think Villa are fortunate to have got the penalty but on chances alone in the second half Villa have had enough chances to win the game the voice of Dean Smith as the nine minutes are up, conscious that Sports Report is coming. Bailey and Diaby with first half goals. Amdouni on the score sheet for Burnley. Foster, who's been a, a constant threat, equalised for the ten men of Burnley after Berger was sent off with 19 minutes remaining. 
However, that Douglas Louise penalty, but Burnley still aren't finished. In it goes to the hard-working Foster. Gives chase. Look at the watch. That Douglas Louise penalty in the 89th minute. Ten minutes have passed since then. We're still playing. And Burnley have got a throw. This will surely be the last bit of action. Far side the left. It's going to be a long throw. In it comes now. Crowded area. Headed out by the Villa defence. Brownhill cushions the ball back out towards the left. Back towards Brownhill. Close down. Now the break's on. But it's Watkins. The goalkeeper is backtracking towards his penalty area. Watkins will want a goal on his birthday. But there was Vitinho to slide in. And it will be a Villa throw on the right. The great counters from Villa. Oli Watkins doing really well there. And they've run the clock down now. This should be the end of play. You're right. We are into the 100th minute. Still playing. Villa 3, Burnley 2. Sports report is coming up. 5.30, our next commentary. And there is the full-time whistle. Our thanks to Dean Smith. Aston Villa 3, Burnley 2. Villa goes second. Level on points with Liverpool. Burnley will bemoan their luck. Berger sent off and a soft penalty. Certainly more to come. You'll hear from Dean next in Sports Report. But it's finished in Villa Park. Aston Villa 3, Burnley 2. Thank you, Ian. Other two scores to bring you the full times.